reactionary, and we actually see no priest in the first week. Maybe we'll see it in the second week. Because actually, I predicted Kalento to bring priest. He's been playing I so much so priest. Yeah. He plays it for all of his open tournaments as well. But um, maybe there's just not a build for priest that he figured out just yet. You saw Kalento messing around on stream too. He's playing like Dragon Priest or Resurrect Priest. Like he was experimenting with a bunch of stuff, but it just feels like it's um, it's just not as good of a control deck as other control decks, and well, it's a terrible aggro deck. <laughs> so there's no way you can really make that work. There's one aggro deck. Did you see on the Chinese ladder where you Which play? You play like a bunch of the early game drops, like sure. Northshire clerics and the uh, Death Lords, but you also play like mind blasts and holy smites. Oh, and um, you also yeah, and then you you ac you actually have Jeeves, and that's the highest cost card in your oh, entire. Oh, Jeeves, Jesus, okay, uh, not that. Yeah, uh, but Fireback showed really me uh, Freeze Priest deck that has like Valen and double mind blast as the finisher, but you kind of have to draw Emperor, right? Um, he says the win rate is actually over fifty percent. To people who don't know what they're what it is, and um, if people know what your deck is, then it's under fifty percent. So, well, the it's... interesting thing about this priest deck is that I think it hit top ten legend in China. Oh, um, wow! So it, it was, yeah. I, I don't mind. Oh, okay. I can show it to you later because I think well, we'll maybe see. it'd be fun. But I, I showed China... it to some other guys in demo and they're like, "Nah, yeah, nah. <laughs> it's, it's it's bad." I was like, "Okay." Yeah, China decks are always very um. Very creative, right? They really like their yeah. Kazan mistakes and Harrison Jones. They like those swing cards a lot. So, mm -hmm. um, well, I think we're gonna see some from the Team Celestials uh, decks uh, that they brought today. I want to see what Frozen Ice has because I think um, he's one of the big uh, wild cards here in the series. We we sort of know what to expect from the other five players. Uh, a lot of them are solid ladder guys, tournament players, performers, but Frozen Ice. He actually doesn't have many tournament results. Um, and the reason why I compare him to Hyped in the first place is because it feels like the same way. He's very respected amongst the peers that are familiar mm -hmm. with him. Um, he does really great on ladder, but his tournament results, they're just kind of lacking. Um, in BlizzCon, he got pretty far in his region, but he wasn't able to get the final hump over. And a lot of the tournaments he enters in Taiwan, um, it's usually like Tom. Tom60229 or Roger are the Taiwanese mm -hmm. players that people pay attention to, and they don't really know Frozen Ice. I just, I just think his picture looks like a magazine cover. So yeah, he's also a GQ good. model. That also is, you know, oh. in, sh in shark contrast to some of the other people who also play Hearthstone. They're, they're more focused on the Hearthstone aspect of it. He clearly is well groomed. Okay, that, that, that's important too, right? It is because there's more to life than just playing Hearthstone. Not much more, but there's still a few things here and there. All right. Like, well, uh, we just, hygiene. Uh, hygiene's very important to Mons. And I hope everyone who ever <laughs> goes to a Hearthstone event also knows that. Uh, sure. Uh, that reminded me of a conversation I had with somebody. I don't know. I think it's Chalky. Like, um, he mentioned that some player was like really smelly and then it was actually getting to his nerves and he played worse than, you know, he previously did. Oh, man. The ultimate mind game. Yeah. Not is that even allowed, though? Distract your opponent. Hmm, I think they should include it in the rules that you must shower or you must at least, you know, be a bit Can you hygienic. put it at least in the Archon rules? <laughs> the Archon yeah. rules? We're yeah. going to make some crazy rules for the live finale. Like, you have to dress up as an angry chicken if you get beat by the card. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to see where you guys go with that because I think mm -hmm. that could be either really funny or really awkward or maybe both. We'll definitely do the workout segments with you, Verdan. Nope, I'm that. not coming. Change my mind, guys. Okay, so we have a uh, Tiddler as Warrior right here, and Show is going to play as Hunter. Um, you know the Show graphic there? What does it resemble? It looks kind of like Death Note. Oh, uh, wait, wait. Um, uh, uh, it's it's not ringing a bell. It looks very menacing, like. Um, what like really? Okay. Oh, oh, then, then, oh man, thought I got the reference across. Maybe chat knows, but um, it's the Warrior pose. Is Garrosh, I suppose? You know, he's sitting on this throne kind of thing. Oh. I, 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 I don't know. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. I, okay. I can, I can kind I mean? of see it now. Yeah, I think you should have brought out the tusks on him. Kind of oh, like Garrosh has those little, that's like, That's coming all the way, man. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's a reference. You have to kind of go all out. I'm really right. slow on these type of things, man. I don't get sarcasm very easily on that. I mean, the Kalento is a pirate. You, uh, I don't think See, you... that was very literal, right? I like that. Okay. But this is, this is just looking like, you know, 
I, I stole his tuna sandwich for lunch or something. <laughs> He's looking at me pretty angrily. Okay. Yeah. Well, here we go. They finally loaded. Uh, sorry about the delay because uh, apparently the first game crashed. So we're just going to have to uh, redo the game here. And looks like we have a patron versus a... Hunter. We don't know yet. Yeah, a hunter. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm here for, Amaz. Thanks, thank Sharing you. Yep. That's what we got you for. <laughs> so he paid me the big bucks. Mm -hmm. We got a show with the patron warrior, but more importantly, he's got early game plays to do. Sometimes the patron warrior takes too much pressure from Hunter, and that leads to them taking too much damage, and they can't answer because Hunter has some pretty high value minions. Like, how do you deal with mad scientists efficiently sometimes, or you know, how do you deal with a high main if it gets down really safe? Well, I think it just depends on if the uh, warrior has like a weapon early on, like fire war axe. That's really much the answer to all aggressive um, decks that are aggressive, I guess. And Red Knot Tiddler doesn't have one, so he has to come up with some creative way to deal with this Snare Juggler and you know minions to follow as well. Well, Amaz said that he thinks Tiddler's the best player in the world. Raynat actually agrees, so this is the first oh. thing. Yeah. Are we agreeing on something here? Yeah, Whoa, Tiddler that's, busting that's up the amazing. fad? Oh my god. It's a Hearthstone fan too, right? A, wow. I think so. That, yeah, because you can see the guys playing Hearthstone right there in the yard. Get in there. Remember when Trump busted a fan before? I did. Yeah. I did. And I, I remember thinking that. the same thing I'm thinking now, which is, what? why do you need a fan? I'm very <laughs> curious. Maybe it's more of a moral thing. Maybe it's like... Rodan, uh, not everybody has as many fans as you, okay? Ah! Says the guy with the biggest fan in the room. I get it. The thing about the the fan too is that um, it it gives you something to hold. So maybe mentally you're able to like, you know, process things a little bit. Better. This is a really great play, by the way. Clearing the board, drawing cards, sets up for battle rage. Um, this is a bad spot for the hunter. Oh well. Oh ne ne well, this is a little bit of a relief, but I guess yeah. you still can't play anything else to back up the animal companion, right? So do you just like quick shot this hero power and set up an animal companion with a freezing trap next turn? Cause the main um the main goal of a hunter is to play a high main on anti board, right? The high main rule, as in like that's what you're trying to accomplish, right? Yeah, I mean you have two high mains in your hand. So you might as well go ahead and focus your entire mid game win condition based upon these cards, being able to get as much mileage as possible. Yeah. Sure Hunter might be able to or sure Warrior might execute that card. They might even deal with the first high main, but the second high main, assuming you can get that down safely and, war and Warrior's still struggling to set up their own win condition, that's going to be really devastating to handle. Mm -hmm. Especially, you don't really see uh, Warriors keeping Execute, right? So they have to draw to the second one when two high mains are up. Uh, Show is going to freeze the um, freeze Tiddler's uh, uh, Acolyte to prevent more draw. And, oh man. That's a pretty good card. See, if, if he actually quick shot the Acolyte and set up a Freezing Trap, um, he would have a very nice board uh, this turn with the trap up and the two minions. And then the Savan Hyman comes down the board. With this play, he gets to keep the quick shot, but um, I think with the other play, he would have more board. So now Tiddler actually has a chance to kind of try and deal with this board. How should he, though? There's multiple well, ways to play this turn. Mm -hmm. We love death, but it gets kind of difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's going for the draw as many cards as possible route. Oh, yeah, okay, so he kills off the kills off the Leoc, draws two cards. Yeah, and then probably just play the accolade. Oh, you have an option here. Yeah, fiery war axe might look like the appealing option, but I think he still wants to draw cards. And also it fills out his curve too. Next turn he also can play Slam, Fire War Axe, and make it a little bit more even on the mana. Mm hmm Sounds right. Uh, I expect this to be another freezing because the Wolf Rider just appeared on the hand. And the only way a Wolf Rider appears in a Savannah High Main deck is if it's hybrid, right? And hybrids only run two traps, and those are both freezings. Generally speaking, yes, but I feel like there's also this weird dynamic where sometimes the hunters feel obligated to mix things up maybe for no reason at all because maybe to be less predictable okay so sometimes it's like you know a random snake trap or something like that yeah but sometimes you go into so uh big lengths to be different 
and you yeah. just screw up your deck at the end, right? Yeah, I, 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 that I can completely agree with. I think yeah. sometimes uh, people try too hard to be different and unique um, just for the sake of doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. you know like, they, they convince themselves that Snake Trap's better when it's like, probably not. You know, maybe the two Fuse Trap is better. Well, I respect their choice, but sometimes you still got to win the game. That's basically what it comes down to. Um, so we see that Sho has the second high main, and once again, it's very hard for Warriors to deal with this. Um, and it looks like Tiller can't even with um, his current hand. What now? Hmm. Also, yeah. one turn off the combo, right? Well, can he set it up so that way it'd be better next turn to do it? Um, well, like if you do, now. it's probably Despite, right? And it, you really don't want to hit the Hyena because you want to propagate more patrons. So, do you just, well, Despite the face? I suppose so. You have to get to a second charge somehow. Yeah. What, Despite one the thing set up for to, sure. Mm, it does set up to kill the, um, the high main as well, but you'll be taking another 6 damage from the 10 you're going to take this next turn. And it just looks really, really tough in this situation. Mm. Tiller is going to hit the face here, just so the execute can do work next game. Um, next game. <laughs> Jesus, next turn. That's right. He's going to execute him so hard, it'll kill him next game. It'll show that hyena who's boss. Um, oh, wow. Uh, this might be lethal, actually, if he gets the right animal companion here. Offer. Oh, that's that's a good oh, one, too. still a lot of damage. 16. It's the exact same damage as a Huffy. Uh, oh, my gosh. That's oh, four man. damage off the Wolf Rider, so it's just that, as good as Huffer. Yeah, that is a lot of pressure. Oh my god. Alright, well... It was a nice try, Tiddler. Um, nice but I don't think he's gonna be able to do Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute here. Oh no. He doesn't have, like, 12 mana. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I hate it when that happens. You just don't have 12 mana. Keep in mind the Leopard Gnome's also too damaged too off the, yeah. off the death rattle. So even if you can get like a lot of life through the Armor Smith, mm -hmm. there's still a lot of damage coming in next turn with the Leopard Gnome guaranteed, whatever comes out of the high main, the quick shot and the hero power. Is there a way he can actually play the Armor Smith and the Taskmaster and stay alive? Um I mean it's looking like Well, this is a really nice play. It's mighty pretty, but he can't even kill off every minion, right? Right, but does he stay alive? I don't know. I don't think so. Because the quick well, shot and the hero power is uh, 5 damage plus the... Yeah. Items. But still, Tilla tried really hard to stay alive there. Yeah, that was, just, that was still a really cool play. Mm -hmm. It's almost like... You know, show's like, hmm, that's a mighty fine play. It'd be a shame if I had the quick shot in my hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. look at that, I do. Wow, okay. Yeah. So he, uh, I guess Tiddler was really, really dead. But um, yeah, Tim Lockwood, um gets a one point on the score as well. And uh, shows Hunter's through. Yep. And again, being able to identify what deck it is and being able to pass off the information, very useful for Liquid. But the series is just getting started. If there's anything we've learned in Best of Elevens that plenty of room for comebacks. And that's kind of like the purpose of it, right? The best of 11 gives the ability for um, some of the variants to be controlled. You can't always control all of it, but you have more opportunities to demonstrate over a lot of games. If you play as one team, you can kind of go off of that result. Because 6-3 is pretty convincing over, you know, 11 games compared to like a 3-2. Because I feel like when I watch best of fives, I just look at the scores and it's 3-2s all the time. And I'm like, wow, I really could have gone either way. Yeah. Uh, with the team format as well, um, you winning two games is good and all, right? I mean, obviously you want yourself to, to win two games, but sometimes that's not enough. So you kind of want to, um, well, at least the motivation is that you can practice with your teammates a lot and you're only as good as your worst player on the team. So you might as well all be good, um, you know, at this format. So that's kind of what we're trying to bring here with this uh, new team conquest format. Okay. Well, <clears throat> so far, so good. Uh, we mm -hmm. have eight weeks of this. And um, I think we're, I think the cool thing will be when we see other teams match up against others because um, unfortunately most tournaments people get eliminated pretty early and you don't right. really get to see a full fleshing out of stuff. But every team is guaranteed to play at least every other team once. Yeah, pretty much um, every team has enough ch uh, opportunities and chances to show off their skills and the uh, team that goes in eighth place, well, you can't make a lot of excuses, you get what I mean? 
uh, because you did lose like a lot of games to be in that place. We're not like yeah. forcing you to like <clears throat> play every single deck that you are not good at. Uh, you just need to like adapt around your teammates and you know figure out a good game plan going to this. Yeah, you lost forty eight games to get to that spot. No, no, fifty six games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Forty two. Like forty two. Sorry, math is math is really hard for me right now. Yeah. The other day in stream, I did 6 plus 5 equals 13, and I actually sat there for like 2 minutes figuring out why I didn't have lethal. <laughs> Just the weirdest thing ever. Streamer life, man. Not, not as yeah, tough like, as the thug life, but pretty close. <laughs> like, counting is actually really hard. I don't think a lot of people actually get like... Because I studied math in university, right? It's nothing like the sort. Um, you know... You have all these formulas and whatnot, everything just goes well. But when you do like basic arithmetic in a in a card game, it's really difficult because all a lot of things can happen. And even during your turn, weird things can happen, like boom bots actually messing up your number count and whatnot, knife juggler, you know, doing some weird stuff. So I think it's hard. All right. Well, uh <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna deny you there. It can be really difficult, especially mm -hmm. if you have a lot of numbers going through your head. But it's not difficult <laughs> too much for these guys. I think uh, they're gonna be able to focus pretty well. Um, one person that I think people will also be surprised about is Nyria from Team Liquid. I think he's a very underrated player. Most people don't really know too much about him. Um, if you don't follow his stream or you haven't really followed some of his tournament results, mm -hmm. they might even be surprised to hear that he's on Team Liquid because he's relatively quiet. But if you look at the ladders and you look at him, people hyped him up for a long time to be maybe the second coming of Kalento. Um, not to mention they have the Ukrainian connection. Okay. And I think he hasn't lived up to that expectation, but he certainly carved out to be his own individual unique person. So I hope Nyria does well. This, yeah, uh, Hearthstone today. does need more mellow people, you know. I think mellow people? Mellow, yeah. I mean, you don't have to be like, you know... Um, all big and out there, I guess. So, I, I, I like Nyria. Nyria is cool. I actually okay. met him for the first time in uh, DreamHack, and um, yeah, he was a really cool guy. Yeah, he actually used to be... Um, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to like, make up stuff, but I, I want to say that he used to fight, like... He used to fight? MMA, like, MMA, I think. Oh, my God. Or maybe he was in the army. But I remember, like, just thinking, like, oh, he's, he's kind of a badass. Because um, he okay. told me that he dropped, like... 20 kilos or something of weight when and it was like all muscle weight and so he's kind of thinned out a lot yeah because you know, he doesn't really he doesn't really eat much generally speaking he just kind of like plays games all day um but he told me he used to be like super fit and ripped because either he was I, I really think it was probably he used to train to fight but i i i i, I don't remember exactly right okay now. i would have never guessed though I, I believe you i believe everything you say for it actually i think it's the military I, i'm gonna go with that one okay right. okay are you sure you want to change up your story again uh, yeah, I think he used to fight. No, he was in the military. Okay. No, he was in the military. All right, all right, perfect. So, um, we're just waiting for uh, games to load here, and um, yeah, whoever wins this game is going to bring back the momentum on their team side. I think momentum, tr um, is like really important, right? Uh, last series we saw that Oskaka just kept on losing game after game after game after being so close to just a match point. I think it's uh, very stressful to be in, put in that spot, right? When you're the only person left on the team to advance. Yeah, sure. Um, but he stayed relatively calm. You know, I think he was able to process all the goods and the bads of what happened. Uh, Druid is not ex exactly the strongest class, but mm -hmm. it's for Conquest, when you have so many chances, it's, it's actually one of the best decks in terms of being able to handle <clears throat> the pressure of uh, winning a game out of six. All right, so we have Frozen Knights versus Nyria. This is Hunter versus Mage. Um, I guess you guys didn't really have much ideas on these guys for art. <laughs> well, yep. I no for the art. I gave my artist a list of things, and uh, he can use them if they if he wants, and he doesn't have to use them all, and he can come up with his own stuff. So uh, this is what we came up with. And um, I think it's pretty cool. I think Frozen Ice has a very pastel-y look to his art. Oh, it's very accurate to how he actually looks. And Nyria, it, it kind of looks like him. I would say that that type of art would belong in our animated series. It's like, okay. Oh. All right. Now that you tell me, maybe I can kind of see right. it. Would you, would you want the connection? Maybe you can like work something out afterwards? 
Uh, I think we're set. I think we're set. Okay, we're good. We're, we're good. We're, we're we're waiting for like you know the next six months to release our second episode. So. Oh wow, six months we'd wait that long. Damn. <laughs> It's just okay. an exaggeration, because okay, okay. Everything. Well, all things considered, I think um, if this is Freeze Mage, I think Frozen Eyes has a generally a pretty good time. But if it's Face mm -hmm. Hunter, I think Face Hunter still struggles against the Freeze Mage, considering that you can't really push heavy amounts of damage in the mid game without going through Ice Barrier. Versus the the mid range Hunter has like a lot of explosive power that um, can really push the Freeze Mage to the limits. Now, I'm not sure if it's Freeze Mage though. Yeah, yeah. Now that we talk about more about it, I just think Freeze Mage is so powerful, right? I think the most powerful decks in Hearthstone are the decks that usually do really, really well, or the decks that just kill themselves, right? We see patrons usually like just kill themselves if they don't draw a weapon, they don't draw a cycle, and Freeze Mage just just kill themselves when they draw every secret. And yesterday we have a broadcast where Dog actually um, drew a secret off the accolade. And then the scientist died, and then he, the scientist got nothing, which was very unfortunate. So. All by drawing his his last scientist when there's no other secrets to be. Oh man, that's even. <laughs> it was more like the worst the three sequence of plays slash draws that could have happened. Mm -hmm. It was very so, funny. So that's how you lose as one of those decks. I mean, that it's really going far fetched. Yeah. So Freeze Mage is a very good deck to bring. I think if you draw the correlation between these decks, maybe it doesn't exactly mean it, but. The one thing that those decks have in common is that they're really good at drawing and handling almost any situation. Okay. And Freeze Mage is super consistent because it draws a lot. Um, it has insane draws, actually, if you think about it. Loot Hoarders, Acolytes, uh, Mad Scientist is a type of draw, Arcane Intellects. Actually, course, you might be onto something. Done. Yeah. All the so-called um, lower tier decks, they don't draw a lot, right? Like Priest doesn't draw a lot. Except for just uh, the cleric, right? The North Shark cleric, and mm -hmm. I guess Temple Mage doesn't really draw much either, or at least it doesn't want to. So yeah, Shaman. Christ, Shaman, yeah, exactly. That's a good, very good example, actually. Well, this is looking like a hybrid hunter. It's got Arcane Golem and Savannah High Main. Right. And oh, good thing he has a scientist to deal with the scientist. Playing a knife driller into scientist definitely does not feel good at all. And I'd say that Nairia is actually in a very comfortable spot. I mean, he has a secret right now. He has Straw with Acolyte and uh, Arcane Intellect. And Frozen Ice doesn't seem like he's... Okay, well, he has an Animal Companion now. But before, he didn't actually have a lot of pressure on the board. And actually, Leok is not that much pressure at all either. Yeah, it's very minor. Um, considering that you have time to draw here. Nairia can set up uh, uh, Arcane Intellect. Also, a really nice thing, too, is that that's Ice Barrier that's already weeded out. A lot of cases, you don't really want the ice block as early on because it gives you less flexibility with your cards if you need to play them. Um, not to mention the ice barrier allows you to get more health, so that way you can push, you can leverage that as opposed to like, oh, I just won't die next turn. Yep, it's just all a stall game, and I actually kind of wanted to see a uh, Doomsayer last turn from Naria, um, just to just you know keep uh, Frozen Ice's. Uh, Temple going from establishing too far, really. Just the momentum is a bit too powerful. And like, as a freeze mage, you just basically want to stall the turn anyways. The later you play a Doomsayer, it's the, the later they have more answers to it, really. You know, quick shots, owls, and whatnot. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I, w I wouldn't have minded that. I well, like, like, if you played Doomsayer cards. last turn, you could have played Acolyte, and then your next turn could be ping the Acolyte and Arcane Intellect. So you could still have filled your curve. So, like, at this turn, like, what do you do here? Um, you don't really want to play a Doomsayer that just dies. Yeah, you can also consider Fireballing Leoc or oh. just playing Acolyte to draw cards. And, like, the thing is, he'll probably want to attack into the Acolyte somehow, and it gains life and draws a card. Uh, but generally speaking, I, I now that we've seen everything play out the way it has. I think you're absolutely right, Amaz. I think the Doomsayer last turn might have been better. I yeah. I mean, I don't claim to be like a Freeze Mage expert or whatnot, but I think that was a very good Doomsayer into a Leoc. It's just that it's very hard to kill a Doomsayer uh, without, say, Kill Command. And if he, if he Kill Commands the Doomsayer with the Leoc attack, then he's not establishing anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Knife Jogger is the bigger threat. The Ock mm -hmm. just kind of sits there as additional hero power, for lack of a better comparison. Exactly. And here, you don't want to play Arcane Golem too fast. You don't want the Freeze Mage to get more mana, obviously. Yeah. So, um, go. 
and go ahead and hit it. Oh, he might be considering keeping the charge. Okay, yeah, I, I do like attacking more. Because, like, what if you draw another bow? You, you really need to use the first bow up quicker. All right, well, the Emperor Thorsen with a hand like this, is that good at all? I mean, generally, Emperor is just high value, but mm -hmm. are these the cards you kind of want to reduce, or would you rather have other things? I think Emperor is actually a pretty good card in this, uh, in this matchup, because the Hunter is kind of pressured into killing it, and if they don't kill it, it activates again. So mm -hmm. I think it's fine. Now, uh, Naria finally plays the Doomsayer on, a, on this kind of board, right? which is perfect. Uh, once again, it's very hard for, uh, for Frozen Ice to deal with, so he can't just play Savannah Hyman and ignore this Doomsayer and disrupts his turn really well. But what's the best way of clearing this? Uh, well, the most damage efficient way is to use Arcane Golem. Because then mm -hmm. it becomes a 5-2 and you kill off the Doomsayer. But I'm trying to calculate if you can do some like cute do uh, Glaive Zooka plays and remove it that way. Uh, yeah, but... Uh, yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. Seems yep. like it's Arcane Golem time. You give him 7 mana as opposed to 6. Uh, uh, that makes it Flame Strike range, but... Nothing else really comes at 7 mana. I guess Antonitis, but the most important thing is protecting this board here. Oh wow, playing the Unleash as well, just to put the extra creature on the board. I guess that's Well, how much good. damage is Unleash going to really get normally? Not really Yeah, much. that's true. That's true. It also plays better into Quick Shot when you get that card out of your hand. Oh man, yep. the second Doomsayer comes into the hand here. Yeah, that's, a, that's really nice. With the doom, with the frost nova that he just got, that's excellent. Yeah, I guess you just do a doomsayer freeze. What to do? Yeah, you also do. could just play one of your more expensive ones and try to like sequence it because it is cheaper mana to do a doomsayer frost nova, but it's more expensive to do a blizzard. Oh yeah, that's right. That's true. Yeah, you, you do want to get out of your expensive cards first. So actually, with that line of thinking. Blizzard might be better. You can always play Doomsayer and Frost Nova. The thing about Frost Nova Doomsayer too is it doesn't give you enough mana to do anything else. Next turn you can Frost Nova Doomsayer and play Ice Block. And then, you know, if it pops you can play Emperor Thorson. This allows you to get an immediate Thorson value next turn, assuming this doesn't... This, assuming this Doomsayer pops. Now, would you play a high main just so you can get the two twos out there? Uh, with this play? hand, now you have I, I guess so. Like, what can you glaze Zuka really? Um, yeah, I guess you just play. Oh, well, you glaze Zuka so you can glaze Zuka gets you the weapon hits too. You have you have to do this over four turns. Right, but you're not really mm. looking for damage right now. You still need some more minion damage before you can go for face, like with kill commands and whatnot. So, uh, and if you play glaze Zuka, you can't really play Savannah High Man. Yeah, yeah, just six that. mana, two two twos. That's a shame. That is a shame. At least for the the hunter player. For Nyria, you're you're like you're pretty, pretty happy good about, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course. So here with eight mana, um, feels like a pretty safe turn to Emperor. Absolutely. I think this is a really good opportunity to put pressure back onto the hunter to deal with it, and it's just gaining more life because Emperor will no longer be on that board after this turn. And you get some pretty cheap cards that are really effective. Uh, the fact that Antonidas is cheaper is big. The fact that um, Ice Block is cheaper is also big. Like these type of things where you allow you to really squeeze in some plays that allow Freeze Mage to come back into this game, which looks like it's on the verge of doing. Yeah, this is exactly what we were talking about before, where the Emperor is just too much of a threat that you have to kill it. Uh, even oh. with the Freezing Trap up, it's just like sitting there, reducing all the mana costs. So I think Emperor is a very good card in this matchup. I'm I'm actually really intrigued because I wonder if there's going to be an opportunity for Freeze Mage just to kill Hunter by straight up damage because he has cheap Antonitis and he's got Pyroblast in hand. So if he can keep oh, yeah. that, like he, I mean, eventually he can just kill him with just damage, right? <laughs> but the thing is, like, if you Antonitis and Ice Block here. And he can't pop your block, you actually win the game with double fireball and a power blast. Then that's enough. Mm -hmm. And of course, hunters don't run healing. Why would you run healing when you have to run more damage, right? 
So that right. might be a play if Nairia thinks he doesn't die next turn. Yeah, it's pretty hard it's, to die. It's, it's pretty ambitious, though. If his, his opponent has a kill command... He still needs something more. Right? Yeah, actually, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Maybe Nairia just feels like he has it. He's going to be keeping those cards for so long. It's actually a Glazooka that he can't play. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, just going to go with the safe play here. Blizzard it is. And what trap is that? Is nice. The oh. trap is uh, freezing, freezing trap, trap, I guess. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Hearthstone. <laughs> yeah, Hearthstone helps. Uh, well, Hunter has better start working on that health count, but the problem is leaving up some of these minions too. There are, wow, there's no way to deny this Acolyte from drawing two cards. Not really, but I guess Naria is just looking to kill now. Right? He has enough damage in his hand. Yeah, this has definitely slowed down way too much. Hunter is not able to utilize chargers. Frozen Ice looks really stressed based off what's going on here. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard matchup anyways, so you don't need to be too devastated when you can't really, you know... Uh, uh, maneuver around this. It's just that Freeze Mage has so many, uh, so many tools to help deal with a hunter. You know, Ice Barrier just slows down everything. Ice up, uh, well, Frost Nova and basically Doomsayer is another, another Ice Barrier because they just slow it down anyways. So effectively, Freeze Mage is like at a uh, hundred health, if you may. A hundred health. Something like that. Right. Every time you health. freeze, your minions can't attack for six. I, I want it, you, you know, to think about th that. A hundred <laughs> health, Amaz. A hundred health, yeah. Like, mm, you freeze your opponent for ten turns, and each turn is freezing for six damage at least, right? So that's a hundred. I think. <laughs> Did we establish we'll, we'll round that we're bad We'll at round math. to the nearest hundred and say you're right. <laughs> we established that we're bad at math, so I think that's perfectly justifiable. I think we've also established that hunter's screwed. I don't think you can really do much... Um, you can even get away with playing Ice Block and Ice Lancing the high main, right? Oh, you can do whatever you want. I think uh, Ice Block and Ice Lance would be the safest. But uh, no, not everyone just wants to go in there. Well, Fireball nope. puts him down to 16, and assuming he doesn't have a second Freezing Trap, you can lethal him next turn. Ice Block is the safest because you set up a way to not die, and then you freeze the high main. Right, freezing the high main seems pretty good. And now, I guess Nairia only dies to something like a Flare or Kazan Mystic, something weird like that. Kazan Mystic would be really sick. Okay. Um, five. <laughs> I guess you play everything. Seven, nine, eleven, twelve yeah. damage. Twelve maximum damage this turn. Oh, yeah, and have also. To... Oh, he kills the Athenaeus, okay. He already has the damage to kill you. You already saw him get two extra fireballs. Yeah, I guess. But then, uh, I guess Frozen Ice doesn't know that, right? His hand might just be all utility spells. So. Yeah, that's true. And that also tells you that Frozen Ice is not running those Flare and Kazan Mystic cards. Nah, you might as well just I would be really it. surprised if he ran Kazan Mystic in the Hybrid Hunter, but... It sounds like um, people who struggle on ladder would do. They like take the deck. They're like, ah, I hate losing to <laughs> to other hunters. You know, even sure. though I'm playing a hunter, I'm gonna go ahead and play Kazan Mystic. It's like, no, I don't think I the don't best think counter to Kazan Mystic is Kazan Mystic. So that might be a thing. Yeah, I guess so. That's a really good point. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, this is gonna wrap up the game. Um, unless Lotheb comes and stalls for one more turn, Lotheb's also a possibility. No, that's not Lothab. But, uh, that is really far from Lothab. So that's going to wrap up the game, and that means Team Liquid takes a 2-1 lead. And Frozen Ice loses his first game here as the Hunter, and they got some pretty valuable information again. Being able to see that uh, what kind of Hunter it is, what things that they play around. Yeah, and information is all very, very important in this Team League format. I think making sure that Freeze Mage win its first game is also good. Um, well played. Just because of the the easiness of countering Freeze Mage, if you know it's Freeze Mage, and cornering it. But generally speaking, there's very few matchups that can corner Freeze Mage the way like Druid and, and Control Warrior can. So, Well done, Team Liquid. They're up 2-1. we still got a long way to finish this best of 11. Mm -hmm. So pick up your heads, all fans of Team Celestia.
still a lot of uh, you know matches to get through. And actually, there is um, there is a lot of Chinese people uh, you know tuning into the stream right now and really rooting for Team Celestial. I guess this is their only representative, right? I mean, for Americas, we have so many teams in the Americas. We also have a couple of uh, EU teams, right? I mean, I guess Liquid is kind of based in EU. Uh, Temple Storm, in a sense, kind of, right? With Gara, but mostly American, I guess. It's so, yeah, a primarily American team. Gara's are only European, I think. Right. And Nihilum, of course, is also uh, an EU-based team. So the only team that the uh, Chinese people can root for is Team Celestial. So they got a pretty big oh, following. They can root for LOE. She's also Chinese. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Playing all sides there, right, Temple Storm? Yeah, you know, we're all things to all people. That's that's mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not our intent, but that's what ended up happening. That's good. Um, so I think looking at uh, the lineups there, I'm still really intrigued by the shaman from um, Silent Storm. I'm not sure what he, what he's exactly planning. I know a few players have really picked up some interest with mid range shaman. You know, Hawkeye doing well with it in Dreamhack has really invigorated some people to maybe look at the class again and see if they can bring it in. And if you're bringing six out of nine classes, I mean that's almost you know no reason not to bring one of the underplay classes and see if you can surprise people a little bit. Um, That's true. Unfortunately for Conquest, uh, it is this—it's a kind of format where it really punishes specialized deck building because um, you don't know, you don't have the guarantee to actually have that deck do well. And if it loses that, you're going to lose, you're going to weaken your other matchups across the board. So you need to bring an overall more solid deck as opposed to like a really wonky, like anti hunter with two Kazan Mystics and, you know all the heal bots that you can get. Yeah, I mean we kind of I kind of learned that lesson again the hard way with the temple mage. It's just that every every deck needs to win at least once and you really need to remember that. Uh mm -hmm. bringing shaman also says that uh you know, I'm not preferring the other three classes. So what is this? Uh paladin, priest and Pr uh, uh shaman. what's missing? And sh paladin priest no. and shaman. Those are the three. No, no, paladin priest and what's missing from I mean celestial's lineup? Oh, uh, ma uh, mage. Mage, yeah. So they basically yeah. t said that oh, uh, shaman is better than mage right now with the shaman pick, right? Yes, or none of us like playing mage. Oh yeah, that too. I guess maybe yes. there's just too many secrets floating around in the mm -hmm. Asian scene that you know I don't want to lose the Kazan mystic all the time. So only running a, uh, for example, one secret class. Uh, might yeah, pay off for them, but then mm, <clears throat> maybe not. That's like a something that works both in favor and against Celestial because they have the Asian metagame to surprise people with, but they also have less to understand and adapt to um, compared to the West. That's why they're such an interesting team to me in this league because they legitimately might be able to bring decks that were like, whoa, that's, that's kind of weird. Um, the Asian scene was the first to really try to put Grand Patron Warrior on the map. Uh, with guys like Fu Oliver, they were really putting in Patron very close to the iteration that people use now. And mm -hmm. that was like a week after release. So I think people really underestimate the Chinese region if they don't really watch much of their streams or their, their tournaments. In terms of the deck building, they really try to get creative. Um, the problem with the Chinese deck building is that they're very creative, but oftentimes they're not refined and optimized. So I'm, I, I don't know if they're going to bring anything really unique and different here. Um, mm -hmm. Probably not, but I'm leaning towards them to still be the ones to surprise the rest of the people here. Yeah, I think they're the ones to do it too. And with the creativeness, you need to kind of uh, have a good balance. Uh, after you have a creative deck, you need to kind of refine it. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to play a lot uh, before jumping on, oh, I want to play something else now. You know, I want to yeah. find out the next big thing. So uh, yeah, it's... That, that, yeah. that does make sense to me. Creativeness. Yeah, I like that. Um, mm -hmm. the, the fact that Frozen Ice is going to queue up here again with the Hunter. Oh, looks like a, I have to re here. Um, the <laughs> yep. fact that he's going to queue up again here means that if he loses, he's going to get benched. Oh, man. Being benched being is such benched, a big setback. Yeah, it's a really big disadvantage considering that you then you can shut out those two classes from the selection screen and you can corner some decks. Yeah. But also with the bench rule, uh, what's cool is you can safely assume that the other team is not going to kill the same person twice. And with that knowledge, kind of, assumption, um, you can kind of eliminate some deck choices already. So sometimes yeah. queuing twice gives you an uh, extra advantage. Wait, wait, wait. Really? 
do you, do you get what I mean? Wait, wait, so you're saying that if you assume teams are going to play it safe and not queue up twice, you can also... You can also eliminate that's, that's, it. That's, so that's for, really like second level mind games. And the third level yeah, is yeah. anticipating that and then doing nothing. And then the fourth right. level is reading that and doing something. <laughs> oh man, lots of uh, you get, you levels. Get, you get what I'm saying, man? Yeah, yeah, eventually I get you it. realize, oh, I'm just confusing myself. Screw okay, it. Okay, but yeah, it's always that cycle, right? But the motivation yeah. for the ventral is for not one person to just show up in the tournament and just lose six games without any other player having a chance to at least play a game. So with the ventral in place, everybody will at least play one game. So uh, you don't show up and do nothing. That sucks if you show up and do nothing. Well, mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if that ends up being the case. Um, Nyria is going to go ahead and queue up again too. So we have Rogue versus Hunter. And I always get a lot of divisive opinions about this. Primarily from your teammate, actually, Amaz. Oh, um, who? Every time I always talk about Hunter versus Rogue, right. Firebat always tells me how much he thinks Rogue is fine in this matchup. But I talk about this with other players. Everyone thinks the Hunter is really good. Against the rogue. So what Wait, do you, uh, you mean? You mean generally or against a certain? No, type? against because like an ag more aggressive. Yeah, yeah, aggressive deck. version, right? I think yeah. aggro hunter or face hunter is uh, way the favorite against the rogue because the rogue needs those specific specific cards to counter that, like vile teacher and preparation and stuff like that. Maybe in the fan of knives, and if they actually don't find them, they're pretty real. They're just dead. All the aggression, uh, all the minions that they can't remove, or they remove with the face. You know, taking double damage from a wolf rider is pretty much dead. You're pretty much dead at that point. So I think it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a Hunter favorite. Okay. Well, slow start again outside this abusive sergeant. It is still two damage mm -hmm. if the rogue ends up using the hero power to eliminate it. And most importantly, I think you're going to be you're going to be aiming for the coin shredder plays on turn three and four, right? That's that's pretty much the, the money spot you're going to try to find with this deck or this hand. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, the bow is really, really strong, though. It does clear three threes. So if you do go with Corn Shredder, then you have to skip out on the bow, which pretty much Frozen Ice will have to because Nariya is looking like he's going to play like a Farseer next turn. Yeah, looking like... Oh, well, he also did pick up the Arcane Golem. That is double three drops. But that is the most awkward double three drops I've ever seen. Yeah, giving mana to Rogue is not... What you necessarily want to do you give it opportunity to play bigger tempo um swing so i think that's definitely the right call here hero mm -hmm. power. so here's the hard decision do you bow or do you shredder because if you shredder you get uh you get punished by sap too much and if you bow you don't yeah. establish anything yeah via teacher prep sap it is the way you well you're, you're basically making the game oh. much more difficult than you had to and via teacher exactly. off the top is excellent yeah check that out a Violet Teacher is the card that you want against Hunters. So good against so many cards. Like, exactly, the Freezing Trap, right? If you want to Freezing Trap a 1-1, one, one, uh, that's really, really bad. So, I'm going to try and forward that. So, I think uh, Nairia is actually ahead in this match. Yep. The Hunter started too slow. The, the whole purpose of Hybrid Hunter is that you're supposed to, ha you're supposed to retain the aggressiveness of the uh, face hunter while being able to maintain other opportunities to board control like the hybrid and push into the mid and late stages of the game and fortunately he hasn't gotten that early aggression in fact he's really on the defensive foot here yep just gotta clear those minions a high main might help but once again you always fear the sap six mana doing nothing is not really a good turn so here maybe a uh, mixture of hmm I mean, Unleash the Hounds does clear the board, but do you like that at all? No, I don't like it because it's too reactive. You don't get to develop much else outside of that three mana. You lose okay. almost everything except the Pilot Shredder. Yeah, I guess you can actually hit with the bow first on the Vile Teacher, use Unleash, and then hope the Glazuka can buff one of the Hounds. So you're left with one Hound and whatever Shredder pops out. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, because the thing with rogues play. is that if they have a minion on the board, they become so dangerous. But if you keep on clearing their minions, they can't like oil their minion and burst you down for a lot. And yeah. usually that's a game plan against rogues anyways, right? Warrior against rogue, you want to ask every single one of the creatures. I'm not going with the freezing trap instead. Oh, I was going to try and freeze the, uh, the drake here. This stealth guy is pretty nice actually. Okay. Yeah, Given Stalker makes it 
invulnerable against backstabs, um, <laughs> SI7 agents. Yeah, this has been the game of top decks. Like every time we mention the card, it just pops out. Yeah. Which is uh, well, good, then right? what because is we kind of know what we're talking about. Well, it's like you, you, always, you always can talk about these hypotheticals. Like this is what they might be playing around. And then when they actually draw, it's like, oh, well, it works out to be the right play and, or the right scenario in that case. Yeah. Because if players don't know the cards, then we kind of want to put ourselves into their positions. You don't mind tossing back cards like Heal by Lothab. So you can take your time camping this freezing trap, I think, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, well, get, getting back an anti heal bot, that's huge. Mm. And there's a way to deal with this high main rather effortlessly because of the Blade Flurry spell power and the Backstab spell power with SI7 agent. Um, in fact, if this Cable and Stalker attacks face, that's a uh, full board clear. Although, the. <clears throat> hey, yeah, it's a full board clear, and you don't even have to pop the Freezing Trap. No, not really. But I think what Frozen Ice is thinking about is once again the rogue minion thing, right? He kind of wants to kill the little type here. That's what I think. Yeah. And maybe even killing the asterisk. Oh, man. It's the spell tough. power is really threatening. Because yeah. now Eviscerate, Fan of Knives, you know, that, that, gives, that kills off the, the high main. Well, he needs to choose something fast. The rope is burning out. The thing about either of these five drops getting pounds back, they can also just be replayed immediately. Yep, okay. and it seems like that uh, he agrees that the spell power might be a bit too dangerous here. Another heal for Naria. He is looking really, really nice here. Yeah, perhaps Sprint gives him so many options here. Yep, for, sap uh, is what he's looking for. Just, just get the sap. No, mm. not quite. Well, you could play the farce here. Mm -hmm. There, just squeeze it in and let it bounce back. The high main hitting to the face. Ooh. That's probably the, one of the least, least impactful high main hits to the face I've seen. And he might even consider taking out the farce here instead, because he doesn't want that to get bounced back and keep this Lothab frozen. Unless. Unless Nyria wants to bounce it back now. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if it's just me or um, you turn into the robot just now. Like. Right now. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me rejoin. I'll be right back. Okay. So back in uh, Frozen Ice's turn here, um, just wants to establish the board more, and maybe even considering uh, kill commanding a Lothab just to uh, ensure that the freezing trap does more work. He already knows that um, his opponent doesn't have a sap because otherwise his Jaime wouldn't be on the board anymore. So that's exactly what he does. Six to the face. Jaime rule not exactly the best if your opponent still has a creature, but still pretty good. Now he just wants to look for a board clear here. Um, immediately mousing over the Thalnos, because Thalnos Eviscerate is a clear on the high main. And uh, probably yeah. follow up that with a um, with a backstab on the Shredder, and then Phantom Knives, whatever comes out. That is very strong play. And assuming anything that kind of pops out has two health, Left, you should be able to wipe that out too. Yeah. This is probably the game ending thing. Like, there's really not much momentum at all. He's got a heal bot and a farce here to continue to stay above um, HP. And things like Arcane Golem don't have that much inherent value because SI7 agent can easily destroy it. Yeah, it feels like on a, the flip um, side, Vitality Totem can attack. <laughs> I don't think that's a good thing now, is it? Is that a good thing? I wonder. It's okay. We finally get to hear what a Vitality Totem says. Have you ever heard a Vitality Totem attack a monster? Uh, it probably no, sounds like a totem, have... like, blah, 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 like that, you know? That's you hear Siri Totem attack all the time. Like. Now I definitely know you've never heard it. <laughs> no, you know, it's the same sound no, as the Siri Totem, totem. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's a whooshing sound. Yeah, okay, yeah, no, that, no, that's what I mean, like right? That sounds it like motorboating or something like that. Uh, <laughs> Alright. Hey, I did voice acting for Kong, um, okay? That's Somebody right, Amaz is in the Taiwanese clan? Yeah, yeah. Someone must You're have liked that. You're in the Taiwanese clan or something. Mm -hmm. I asked if I could do some voiceovers for the future cards of whatever okay. comes out. No. So. No? Well, Blizzard said maybe. I'll ask, which means no. Okay. Aw. 
Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Does it look like a pretty good blade flurry opportunity while setting up, um, you know, a shield bot? If that's another freezing trap that comes out, up, then. Oh, wait, no, is that the second freezing trap? Uh, that is the second freezing trap, yes. Okay, it's, so uh, then there's no need to try to play with that. Oh, well, he's gonna major have damage coming out this turn. Yeah, developing the oiled um, SI seems really, really smart. And uh, here we go, he's going to be a flurry turn. Saving the deadly poison for the second flurry, that's also pretty smart. Or, uh, Nairia can choose to push a little bit more damage here. Do we reduce your opponent down to say, what, uh, 13, is it? Well, you'd be doing 12 damage with this, so you put oh, him down to 9, nine. if you had that deadly yeah. poison. But, um, it's 13 yeah. this way. 13 yeah, this 13 way. this way. That's what you meant to say, Mom. Right, right, right. Oh, wait, there is another trap, though. Oh. Huh. Wait, I thought you Which said one? both freezing traps have been Yeah, both freezing traps are gone. What is this one? Can we have a mosso for on it? Maybe it's a so snake maybe trap. maybe a snake trap? Oh, no, no, no. no it's, it's a freezing, freezing trap. Okay. Looks wow. like we got our game. Brooke has the sick hunter player. He has three <laughs> freezing traps in his deck. Like, I would I play three. I that. I would play three, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Would he attach uh, Glaive Zuka onto this leper gnome? Uh. Nope. Probably not. Yeah. And NTQ but basically just seals the deal here. Yeah, this game's been a runaway for a while because uh, Rogue just never got put under true amount of pressure. There's just so many effective ways for uh, Nyria to just end the game next turn. Oh, yeah. And Frozen Ice is going to be benched, Amaz. It is. It is. Yeah, he is going to be benched. So yeah. his, uh, his class is going to be locked out from being picked. Uh, I was more of wondering that you became a robot again. <laughs> but, uh, oh. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's okay. And deep heal bot. And uh, no, that's not going to do it. So I think it's uh, it's game over for Frozen Ice here. He has to just uh, wait for his teammates to free him from the prison. And I rear through. I rear good. He's going to basically 2-0 and uh, leave it up to his teammates to get the win here. And uh, just like that, Freezing Trap is going to mean that he is lethal with the uh, Blade Flurry. So good job on Team Liquid, getting a huge advantage over Team Celestial with a 3-1 lead. And we'll see um, what the next matchup brings. With Frozen Ice Bench, um, Team Liquid definitely has... Uh, clear picture of what matchups are going to be, so they're definitely going to use that to their advantage. Alright, I'm back in my right. Did you miss me? Perfect. Sorry, yeah, of course I was I just gone for about uh, a minute there. Wow, my cam got really purple. I don't know what happened. It got really pink. It got really, well, purple on my screen, but I guess pink on your screen. Yeah, Apparently I'm screen. having a, a big rave party and everyone's invited. Mm -hmm. um, you're invited to a mod if you want to come join me. Oh, that's good. I do like I do like pink parties. <laughs> All right. Well, um, taking a look at the, what's remaining here, Frozen Ice is Benj, which means Shaman, Warrior, and Druid are the only classes uh, available here. And we know it is Patron Warrior, and uh, we don't know anything else though. Well, I mean, if there's gonna be a Patron Warrior, a Druid, and a Shaman, you pretty much want to play a Warlock, I think. Uh, it just it feels like well I guess it depends on what kind of warlock that is right but it's if it's a, zoo a hand lock, from Savitz, I think oh, this, oh yeah oh yeah of course of course it's zoo so uh, zoo is not bad against patron zoo is really good against druid and zoo is really good against shaman so I think my prediction is going to be Savage warlock next okay I wouldn't mind um, show's patron warrior here either are we show playing the patron warrior oh we don't know yet. Oh, it was Tiddler. Yeah, okay. Show was playing Hunter versus Patron Warrior. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we don't know what Show is playing uh, his Warrior archetype, but we do know Savage Zoo. And just based on that information alone, I think Savage Zoo is gonna crush it. Uh, there's no, there's no uh, Hunter or uh, Rogue to kind of counter that Zoo, and you really want that Zoo to win because you already revealed that information already. Okay. Yeah, I, I can get behind that for sure. I think I, I if. Show is playing the Patron War. I think I wouldn't mind bringing it out here too. At worst, you have the mirror. Um, and if you're Celestial, what would you want to bring? 
What bring? What's your best chance overall? Oh man! If you know Savit uh, brings Zoo, maybe Taylor brings his own warrior. I think yeah. I think Patron against Zoo is the best chance. I think Patron against Zoo. Patron is a favorite, but then overall, I think Zoo is a very good choice for Liquid. So, I yeah, that's that's my prediction. So Patron versus Zoo, and boom, no, not at all. Well, we got one right. Savage is definitely gonna queue against the Zoo Lock, and Sandstorm gonna bring out his mysterious Shaman. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna. Th I'm probably assuming it's maybe Mech Shaman. I'd be really surprised if uh, he just decided to go crazy Shaman with mid range. But at the same time, that's that's kind of Siren Storm style. He likes he likes blowing people's minds to a certain extent. Maligo um, Shaman. Maligo Shaman. Yeah. Well, Ancestors why, call why not, why not Shaman. Free Shaman. Have you ever seen that? Free uh, Shaman with, with Frost Shock and Frost, Frost Elementals. Shock. Oh my God. Okay. Have you seen that? Because one oh, time I, I was watching that. a stream and then. I think it was Raynad's stream. I was watching it, <laughs> okay. and then his opponent coined out Mad Scientist on Shaman for turn one. What? Yeah. Wait, was, did I miss and something? And then it just kind of said, you know, greetings, friend. And then you just kind of sat there with a Mad Scientist, and we, of course, we were there blinking for like five seconds. <clears throat> okay. And, Maybe uh, he he's won. playing. Uh, uh, was he it won Undertaker. The, the free Shaman won. No, I'm not. I'm not kidding you. It was basically yeah, really? the, the Mad Scientist was a troll card, but you play Ancestors Call Maligos. But you just play freeze cards, and you just keep freezing the board. But you Wait, have frost elementals. Then what the heck was the mad scientist doing there? Just to say that you lost the freeze shaman with mad oh, scientist. Oh man, the pride, man. It's the uh, mad scientist is a victory cigar in that deck. Okay. Uh, well, Savage is gonna start with two one. Is really strong against totems, and looks like Sandstorm oh. is gonna run the um. Oh wow, that shaman. is not the hand I expected to see after a zombie chow actually. Um, so he's still kind of splashing into the yeah, mech yeah. variant a little bit. Yeah? Yeah, but it's got to be mid-range. I think it's not even mech. I think that Power Mace is just solely for board control. I think he's got Alakir and, or Neptalon or maybe even both. Okay. It well, I think he definitely feels, has Shredder, right? Definitely Shredder with yeah, the Power Mace. Yeah, he's got Shredder, uh, Harvest Golems, and maybe even an Anoyotron. But I think those are the only mechs in his deck. Okay. Makes sense. I'd be surprised uh, to see anything else. Yeah, <clears throat> coining a power mace here is so strong because next turn you're going to make a yeti. And uh, zombie chow, well, I actually would have preferred the zombie chow hitting the, uh, the haunted creeper here. Because actually Firebat told me this. Zombie chow's main purpose is to get board control. Um, because hitting the face actually doesn't matter because of death rattle. So um, you might as just, well, you know, gain board control that way. Sure. I can get behind that. All right. Well, it's looking like a pretty good Argus turn for Savish next turn. So Science Storm will try and clear as much as he can. I guess the best way is to just get a spell power totem, but then at the same time you can you don't develop the Harvest Golem at all. Yeah, the Harvest Golem, unfortunately, it's just the momentum has been stopped by this very awkward Imp Gang boss. The fact that I was going to spawn two one ones if you attack it makes the board a little bit more in favor for your opponent. But you can feel pretty confident. I mean, not many people in this type of zoo are running things like, you know, as commonly Direwolf Alpha anymore. Um, so true. I think you can benefit a lot more off of um, having a really powerful 4-5 on the board at the moment. Oh, wow. He actually chooses to kill the Imp that spawns to make the Zombie Child 2 health. That's actually a pretty good play. I like it. And now in response... The Argus is going to come down. Creeper is most likely going to kill the Zombie Chow because that's a good value trade. And we're going to see what uh, Sandstorm can do to this. The Earth Shock is looking really, really nice here. Yeah, it's kind of pick what you want to eliminate the Haunted Creepers. Um, or if you get a Spell Power Totem, would you eliminate the Imp Gang boss? Well, uh, no, right? Because two one ones is a little bit more than um. One. One, one, one. Okay. Yeah. One, one, one. <laughs> oh, God. So this is looking like a pretty good opportunity for Sonic to potentially stay alive now. A lot of stuff, a lot of funny stuff can happen with Bane of Doom. Yep. Is it Bane of Doom time? Oh, no. Implosion's oh, better. Probably not. Implosion does have synergy with Knife Juggler for oh, six yeah. mana. Hmm. Okay. Well, so I guess Bane of Doom it is. Who's a totem? Doomguard. Is it? Oh! Oh, it's that's an Illidan. That's a good card. It's a I golden Illidan. 
Oh Man, my I goodness. remember when it came out in DreamHack. That's Illusion is actually a very, very good card. That's really funny. Um, and now that Illidan's, you know, taking a hex over, if yeah. he ends up drawing one of his legitimate threats, Savitz will have it uncountered. And there you go. That's one of the legitimate threats. Yeah, Can't really it's pretty take good. This turn. It's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Well, three is pretty good. Three on the implosion is average, um, but the most important thing is that now it's forcing your opponent to have the answer to not juggle behind a taunt, which he conveniently does. Fire mm -hmm. elements on the three, two. But then uh, we're going to see some uh, Sea Giant action. There's a second Hex, though. There is and a second Hex. It's not even about that Shaman will be out of removal of Hexes, but think about the tempo that What's you're going to be able to gain if you have Hex and Lightning Storm next turn. Uh oh, this is a greedy play. This is a very greedy play. No. Very, very greedy. Oh, we the you get punished one. for the greed. That's what happens when you don't play Sea Giant when you can. Oh, man. Well, I guess to Silent, uh, to Savish, it's not really that bad because. Sandstorm is holding a hex, right? But still, like you get you get punished a little bit. Oh man. Yeah, I would play the Sea Giant for sure. Yeah, it's interesting. I think Savis is really regretting how that ended up panning out. Now he knows if this is tracing to the knife juggler. He so wants to get the attacks in now before it gets lightning stormed away potentially, but I still think you need to charge the face, get the damage in, put Shaman in a really awkward spot. And an awkward sport he is at with this kind of hand. No board clears. Oh, mana size not going to be good enough. Feeling okay. totem. Not bad. It's like, yeah, it's okay. It's not the worst one. But BGH is a very good draw next turn. Uh, so you definitely tap here because you can. You can play everything and then play C Giant as well. So you should tap here first. Well, you should. <laughs> Just so you can have more options. Yeah, generally speaking, you want to draw first in case something changes, but I don't really think anything changes. Oh, basically. abusive would be nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, true. Abusive would be better than maybe the Void Walker. Yeah. But this is fine. You just slam down everything. Sea Giant comes down as well on the field. Sea and Giant for one mana. Goodness that, gracious. That is pretty value. So he's looking for some value trades here. Doesn't seem like he can play everything. So he has to choose. Is he worried about the spell power on the Drake at all? Uh, as a shaman, not really, I guess. But at the same time, I I, I guess you kill it, huh? This is the okay. lightning storm. He's fearing the lightning storm. True. All right. Well, this is the march back. If uh. If you're a Silent Storm, you got a big game hunter to answer, and you can load up the board with Azure Drake. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so here, you kind of want to kill the Void Walker because uh, not only does it get buffed by Morganis that we see immediately, is that if you kill the Creeper, you're actually not removing any power off the board. It's still two mm -hmm. attack. Hmm, I was pretty useless. Morganis is not as effective on this board as you might think either. Right, um, but you just saw BGH, right? What's just, the chances of I mean, him having a BGH. second hex? Yeah. But he's going to be able to remove it relatively easily. I guess you just you're, you're, it's your best play this turn, because if you tap and you get Owl into really nothing else... <laughs> Power of Warming, for example. You're basically passing. Yeah. Yeah, Morganis is fine here. I mean, based on what Savage's current situation is. We know it's really bad. And oh, <laughs> that's a that's bit better. better, I guess. That's much better. Realistically, though, that just might force out a second hex from Silent Storm, so that way it doesn't get the the big swing from Malganus. Oh, that would be actually pretty detrimental if he actually uses the hex here. Hmm. This end is pretty tame. Like, nothing big, nothing too crazy. What about smashing the the Void, uh, void Caller and hexing? Next see what ever comes out. If yeah. if it ever comes out at all, yeah, that, that's yeah. a good way to do it. Oh no, just keeping it around. Well, you can also use crackle hex. Oh, just hexing this. Oh man. Well, that was the play I originally thought because it allowed you to develop the board. But but then you were talking about how how did you deal with it afterwards? And now that he has flame tongue and crackle, I think he feels comfortable. Oh with man. 
But the Void Walker is such a big draw right now. That is a 3 5. Yeah, um, but he's got Flame Tongue Sword, right? So that should allow him to trade down well. Oh, Alec here as well. Now, oh, it's, yeah, Malganus is dead for sure, right? Mm hmm. In fact, um, Malganus trades just for the Divine Shield and the, the Totem. This is a really good opportunity to swing the game right now. Mm -hmm. And it's so far away. 10 HP feels like 100 to borrow a term from a Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just about to say. It does feel like 100. You have no direct damage outside of, you know, uh, Bane of Doom guards. Bane of Doom's yeah, only okay, direct damage. Sure. <laughs> That's true, actually. Yeah, and now you're staring at lethal. Nah, uh, Bane of Doom silence. is going to kill the Azure Drake. Uh, oh, a little bit too late there. Or can you still survive? No. Um, hmm. If you silence Alec here... Are we, did you silence Alec here or the totem? Bro, he silence Alec here, he can kill the Drake. Yeah, silence Alec here. Totem still does a lot of damage. Uh, you'd have a 5-5 five, five and mm. a 6-3, so that's uh, 11. So if he rolls high on the Crackle, he loses. Yeah, that's but at the same time, he's still in a bad spot. He still can't kill your opponent next turn, right? So, mm, pretty difficult. You still don't abusive, so right? Many possibilities. Yeah. The abusive and the Drake are actually comparable damage. If you kill off the abusive, it's, you're killing off four damage. And if you kill off the Drake, you kill off four damage. Oh, what it should have done is kill the Shredder for Doom uh, for Doomsayer. That's the winning play. Oh, well, I guess the one in the 64 chance. <laughs> yeah, but no, I mean, here you're just dying for sure, right? How can you muster up 10 damage? In the course of like two cards, you just can't. So I six, guess that was just the best. Six. Six. Oh. Uh, so uh, close. That's still fine. Next best. Because move. your opponent can't tap. Yeah, I think the best way was to kill the shred and go for the one in 67 or whatever the number is. The 1.5%. The 1.5%. Now that's still a percentage. Like right now, this is a 0%. Oh, and now he can still, right? Oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. 1.5%. Yeah, yeah, okay, he can still do it. <laughs> Here we go! So, he has so to first cute. roll three or higher. Oh, that's okay. good. Then has to be Doomsayer. And... Oh, the oh. other troll. Two drop. Okay. Still zero. Or Walker oh. Chow. Well, Shaman uh, gets the win. And um, once again, very unexpected that uh, Shaman is actually undefeated in this league. Yeah, it's 2 and 0. 100% win rate. 100% win rate. It's because people keep underestimating it for sure. And what's also more impressive is that this is not a mech shaman. Yesterday, Kibler won with the mech shaman. Right. Um, and now, Silent Storm is done for the day. He won yeah. his two games. He detoured. That was he cleaned uh, up. He's going home. Or he is yeah. home, and he's going to go get a sandwich. A or he'll ask someone to make a sandwich for him. Okay. I, 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 I might see what you're doing there. Yeah. Maybe. And Tiddler. And Frozen Ice has to start pulling their way because they've combined for three losses so far. It's actually so crazy that the team captains are the ones that are dropping their games. Well, not... Oh, wait. Not yesterday, though, right? Yesterday, not the yesterday, team captains yeah. were winning. Yeah, Firebat and Life Coach just won their games immediately. And then so, uh, yeah. Ecop won his game, too. <laughs> yeah, Ecop won his game, yeah. So, um, I don't know. It feels like this format is really cool because you see who is actually going to breeze through and it's always somebody who's like left behind. Well, because not everybody can win if you're on a losing team, unfortunately. One player oh. will end up being a struggler or ends up losing two or three, maybe even four games if you're Kalento. Yeah, oh man. <laughs> but the series just now, um, it seems like Force and Boys were such in a dominating position. They were so close to getting a 6-0, but Temple Storm did manage to win, what, uh, four games afterwards? So that was fine. Yeah, and the team captain, Garan, ended up winning his games too. So that's true. Team captains are coming through. Team captains are coming through. Not not in this series though. Savitz and Tiddler are they need to pick it up. They're slacking yep. a little bit. Scrubbing it Still up. Still waiting for their moment. Okay. Not slacking. It's just waiting for their moment. And uh yeah, we'll see what the next game brings. But once again, guys, it's uh over a couple of weeks. At the end of the end of, end of all the weeks, we're gonna see who does the best. Couple and, of weeks. Um, sorry? 
a couple of weeks. You're giving the impression that we'll be done by the uh, end of July. Guys, we're going to uh, September. It, it, it'll go by really fast. I mean, yeah, it's July already, right? It just feels like all yesterday the way to was September. September. Wait, we're ready. We actually were close to calling this the fall classic. That's how deep we're going into the, the season, man. Well, yeah, very close, very close. But uh, <laughs> as we, I think, the, I don't think we explained the advantage yet. Uh, the first uh, placement for this round robin phase actually gets to pick who they play against in the live finale. So it's actually quite important to place as high as you can. Like um, every place kind of matters. Sure, uh, fourth and fifth are kind of the same, and sixth and seventh kind of the same. But uh, it gives more incentive for players and teams to do well over the whole course of the league. Yep, that's right. Uh, you know, there really aren't many losers until the <laughs> very last week. And then okay. all of a sudden, there's a lot of losers. And uh, then we have the top four, and then we finally get one really rich team, one kind of rich team, and then the rest to, you know, wallow in their sorrows for not <laughs> being able to win the best. There's a lot of money on the line, man. $250,000 prize pool. And uh, I believe 100 to the winner. So this is a lot of money that's going to be distributed. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. In the meantime, uh, these teams, the team captains are going to face off. Oh, man. Druid versus Druid. Oh, man. The classic matchup of who draws Wild Growth and Innervate as well. And like you said previously in the previous series, uh, I, of course, used previously twice there. Uh, whoever draws Innervate, I think uh, as well, is the favorite. Because you just want to establish the first minion. And the person who does that is always ahead. Because druids usually play one minion a turn. Or remove one minion per turn. Yeah. They can't do both at the same time. The only card that does that is Keep of the Grove. There is um, another way to differentiate players. I know some people... They, they facetiously say, like, whoever draws the better cards is the better player. Right. But um, there are some scenarios where you can see the better druid players... Um, really push the window of when to be aggressive versus when to go for the trades and be defensive. And sure, I think I mean, a lot of um, mid-tier players who don't who don't maximize their win percentages over trade, and um, they, they they can't read the situation as clearly as some of the best players. That's that's the small differences that end up giving them the win sometimes, which ultimately make the biggest difference. Yeah, okay, I, I agree with that because there are a couple of situations where do I reveal the shade or, or do I don't, right? Do I go for the mm -hmm. face or do I go for the value trade? Yeah, that definitely makes sense. But I guess it's more apparent when both druids have wild growth or innovate or both druids do not have those cards. Those are sure. the exciting games in my opinion because sometimes those cards just really give you such a huge advantage that sometimes a mistake or two would not cost you the game. But... Yeah, you do want to win those 20% of the games where both druids do not draw anything, right? Is it 20%? Nope. Is it? I, I mean, okay. I'm just throwing a random number out there. Gotcha. <laughs> the, 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 the game that happens every so often. Is this one of those right. games? Yeah, I think we not, see a wild growth sir. into double we five see drops. see a wild growth, but we see nothing on Tiddler's side. Well, not yet, at least. Uh, I, well, so we just... just this hand is amazing. You got double five drops next two turns. And uh, Tiddler just here powered a turn two, so we know that Tiddler does not have a Wild Grove. Uh, but does he have an Innervate? No, nope, he has a Shade. No. Shade is good too. Yeah. Shade is still something because now you're taking initiative onto the board, even though it does kind of stink that you're not able to take the, the mana tempo back in your favor. All right. And I think the worst case scenario, too, is when your opponent's going first and he gets a wild growth off and you can't really punish with a follow-up play because then he's two mana ahead. And uh, it's like when you're playing Ancient of Lore and you're like deciding if you should play Azure Drake, it's like, oh, well, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to be able to do here um, in that scenario. So mm -hmm. I, I really like that uh, Tither is at least still able to play a three job because it keeps him competitive in this game. That's true. Um, so right now, we don't really see Tiddler's uh, cards because he forgot to invite us. Um, so hopefully, oh, he'll get right on that. It was bad, man. Yeah, it, it was bad, bad, man. So yeah, once again, uh, Druids can only usually remove one creature or develop one creature. And Tiddler actually mm, used two cards to kill one card, so Savage is looking really pretty here. Yeah, what do you think about that using Swipe? Maybe his hand is developed to the point where he can't afford to play Swipe any other turns from now, so he needs to swipe now so his curve can be respected and he can deal with that Druid the Claw. That's, that's uh, my... I, that 
Uh, you could say that, and you could also say that he does have a shredder. Like the only thing he has in his hand is just uh, a swipe for four. Yeah, sure. I mean, you could also yeah. I mean, I mean that's what ultimately you can say about it because swipe in this matchup is not very powerful outside of just drakes and and shredders themselves. Mm -hmm. Um. I actually would rather keep Wrath sometimes if I had to choose between, even though they're comparable damage, because okay. uh, the swipe is really clunky versus the, uh, the the Wrath is more versatile. Although it does help you draw cards sometimes too. So, yeah, uh, taking a look at this hand too, you want to kill off that Lotheb, and you can develop the Shredder, and that's still pretty effective here. What's what's the hesitation on Savita's end? You think? Actually, I think. Um well, I, what I would do in this situation is I would think whether to go face with the Adric or not. I don't really, mm, I'm not really crazy about the Belcher. It just dies for free for the Lotheb. But I would have played Shredder and considered just attacking face with the Adric. Because, like, Tiddler is probably going to remove the spell power off your board anyways. So. Oh, yeah. That's also a pretty good consideration. He already yeah. just used Swipe, too. Yeah. Wow. So Vegas play is going to actually give him some profit here because he has a spell power swipe now so that play he just made paid off yep. really really well and he's got a three drop too to follow up on it mm -hmm. i mean tiddler gained back some of that mana he lost through the wild growth but is he able to stabilize enough because this is a lot of damage coming his way and there's a savage war waiting on the other end yeah it's not it's looking pretty difficult but man the vision's turn was actually pretty cool the um the belcher actually set up the lotheb to die to the swipe and mm -hmm. Tiller played exactly Emperor for five five health. Yeah, so that was a really good way to play a little off curve so you can punish your opponent the following turn. I like that. Yeah, that was really good. Ended All up right. working out really well. Tiller's gonna it's basically struggling to gain back the board here. And uh Well. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so there's the Ragnaros player, there's a double shredder play. Or uh, is there a Savage Roar play you can do too? Maybe. I don't like Savage Roar here. Do it. Not, not really. It gives you the Shredder opportunity. It does save the Shade from dying. That's a plus. You could also just double Shredder and just pass, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't mind the double Shredder play either. It's really sticky. Your opponent can't deal with it. He's already used the Keeper of the Grove. You have Savage Roar, so the more minions you stick give you a higher chance to draw Forest of Nature for the lethal. True. Or the second Savage Roar even. The second Savage Roar even as well. Right, so Double Shredder it is. Okay. Back over Tiddler, we can only guess his cards. Judging the way by uh, he played, it should be pretty clunky, right? Uh, so well... Before. I don't, yeah, I don't think he has an Ancient of Lore. I think he would have developed it last turn, considering that he had the Emperor go off. Um, he would have made cards a lot cheaper. Hmm. He needs to prioritize uh, keeping the body count low, though, because he knows his opponent will have 9 mana. So if he can try to keep as many bodies off, then he'll get the least damage possible. Sure. That's probably a Wrath that was pointed just now. I really can't imagine that being any other card. Second keeper, maybe. Second keeper, eh, maybe actually, but nah. Raph seems more obvious. Ooh, another Druid Claw. Just oh man! Your spell. Druid versus Druid in that shell. Always to the that face. That is aggressive. Okay, and, and nah, that's, that's lethal. That's, <laughs> that's a million damage. Right? Yeah, we ran into the nearest million. It's a million damage. <laughs> I'd like oh, to man. see the shredders being popped. By the way. Ev per per Drew the Claw. That'd be awesome. Just to see what comes out. No, nope, Tiller doesn't give him the satisfaction. So this is one of the games where it's kind of decided by the Wild Growth, right? Um, mm -hmm. Which happens. Sometimes you just gotta shrug it off. I mean, even in poker, sometimes, you know, the lucky ones, you just let your opponents win or you just win yourselves. But it's the ones that, once again, if both players get really lucky with their ramp cards, or if both players get really unlucky with no cards, uh, that's where the matches get exciting. And this is just a textbook example of uh, a druid kind of drawing better than the other person. Okay. Well, I, I still think that there's some cool moves made by Savid's very subtly that oh, ended that up helping him. 
Yeah, yeah. That, that Belcher so. was a very good play. So yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. So with it's that. a it's not an obvious play. It's not a play that uh, you can say most people would make. They would probably try to favor the easy one, but um, ends up panning out well, and he ends up getting a really important win on the board here because now it's four two, and more importantly. Um, one of those cases where you force Team Celestial into an awkward spot. If, if Tiddler queues up again and loses, then he's benched and he had to go back to Frozen Ice. Um, and then you can corner his deck as well. So, you know, one of these things of, you know, Team Liquid's in a really good spot. And I'm really feeling like uh, they're in a good spot here to close out. I like their classes here remaining. It's not even... It's not even poor classes. Sometimes you're like, well, I have Paladin remaining if I'm Nihilum. It's like, I have to really hope this Paladin deck can win. Um, right. It's like, well, I have Warlock and Warrior, two of the best classes to bring in a, in a format. But what ish shows Warrior? Do we know yet? Or he hasn't shown it yet, right? He's been practicing a lot of Patron Warrior. There's, you know, actually there's been posts of show struggling with Patron Warrior, missing lethals, because they're really tricky to find, and he's been practicing it pretty hard. Maybe that disincentivizes him from being able to play it confidently in a tournament. Mm -hmm. He might bring Control Warrior just for stability and comfort. But at the same time, Patron Warrior is just so explosive, especially against this type of lineup where it's great against Druid. Um, well, I may not agree. It's like, it's like better against Druid, and it's not so bad against the other classes here either. Yeah, as long as it's Patron Warrior, then uh, Tiddler's Druid is going to really struggle to find a win. Um, the rest of the decks, I think, could um, are pretty good. But it feels like the Druid, once again, is kind of bullied into not winning a game, right? It's always the Druid that's been last to uh, advance in most of the series from this week. Just from this series and the previous series. Yesterday's series, the Druids actually did fine. Um, oh, it was Patron that was actually struggling. Yeah, yesterday. Patron was the struggle. It was on the struggle bus last. Uh, the struggle last bus. It was yeah. That's it. Was just really it was going uphill. It just couldn't get over the top, and um, needed a little extra push there. And it ended up getting the wins, but Patron Warrior had a very poor win rate, same as Paladin. Um, but today it's different, you know. And I'm I'm looking forward to see which infographic will pop out to see like the win percentages and the class choices and the different tech cards. Mm -hmm. Are deck list lists posted at all, by the way, Mom? Uh Oh, yeah. Uh, deck lists will be posted uh, in teamarcon.com after every week, of course. Uh, just so, so basically, right after this, um, this uh, series, you guys can see all the deck lists. And of course, we will um, put some featured deck lists up and analyze them a little bit more in the uh, deck list section. So you guys can play these decks uh, if you want. No priest, though. If, you're finding a, if you want to find a good priest list, then you might have to find somebody else somewhere else gotcha all right well uh looks like we're getting ready for our next match there hopefully we can get uh the tiddler pov uh next time or whatever player we have from right. Team celestial i guess he was just in the zone yeah when you're so like focused you forget times. about everything and of course they are in busy yeah. mode so the only way we can contact them is through skype uh you know just send them a skype message and whatnot so uh, should have sent them the personalized cell phones amaz oh sorry personalized Each cell phones player, what i meant yeah yeah, um, yeah, by exactly. pigeon, by the carrier pigeons. Uh, by bird. Actually, that's how we communicate. We we live in Hogwarts. Oh man. Well, Sixo does. Did you see his art? He looks like he was. He looks like he actually does belong to like Hufflepuff or something like that. Hufflepuff. Can imagine. That. No, nah, let's be real. Sixo's a Slytherin. Oh. Oh wow. Okay. 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 I I can see that. And everyone who knows him would agree. It's a sinister-looking face, right? It is. He's, like, no, he's, he's very, you know, he's also okay. quite pale. He's got like that, uh, you know. Okay, I see. That malevolent stare. I got at you. I got you. And he plays, he plays Face Hunter and Zoo all day on ladder. Come on, that is that Slytherin in a book. That, Come on. You know, I actually think Face Hunter is very respectable in a in a tournament because like players are all good, so they can play against like Face Hunter really well and. Sometimes you always have to eke out those last bits of damage. So actually, I respect Face Hunter. Okay. Okay. You're entitled it's, to your... It, maybe it's just me. I don't disrespect Face Hunter. I think um, the deck is trickier in a tournament setting than, than you think. Uh, but in ladder settings, yeah, I let the disrespect flow. But it's primarily my own salt. I, I just I get really salty when I lose. Everybody gets a little bit salty. <laughs> It's the degree. Warrior, um, warrior versus warrior, by the way, coming out here. We're going to see the show warrior finally out. Is it the control warrior? 
we've seen one Control Warrior earlier today, where Hyped uh, was bringing it, but unfortunately it was a very quick game. It was a one-sided aggro paladin versus Control Warrior. Didn't really do much. And we know that Tiddlers bring uh, the the Patron Warrior. What do you think if uh, if the if that uh, show is running Control Warrior and Tiddlers running Patron? Uh, I th think the Control Warrior generally is favored, but it's not impossible. Some people would say like, "Oh, Control Warrior wins like ninety ten or something." So I remember someone tossed out some oh, random ninety ten like that, uh, and I was like talking to the rat at ESL, and he was like explaining to me a lot about the nuances of that matchup. And when he described it the way, I, like I agree, I think a lot of people don't play that matchup correctly because they don't see it very often, either on ladder or they don't really practice it much. Um, so if it is Control Warrior versus Patreon, I would give the nod to show. But I would definitely say that Tiddler is still competitive, especially considering that he's put some of the most time in out of anybody playing Patron Warrior. Okay, that's a fair analysis. And of course, we want you guys to tweet out hashtag ATLC if, um, you know, just give what you think about the Warrior matchups, what you think about the whole tournament, some feedback you have. You know, keep communicating to us and uh, we'll improve basically every broadcast. All right. Well, it looks like the players might have actually started, and we're just trying to get the spectator oh. mode in the way. In the meantime, we can imagine our own warrior versus warrior game. So this is what's going to happen. Okay. I'm going to turn to armor up. What are you going to do, Amaz? You can play uh, as. You okay. Can roll. I will turn to. I'll, I'll play a loot hoarder. <laughs> okay. Well, you played right into my hands. I turned three cool taskmaster your loot hoarder. Oh, okay. Well. Followed up. By I, I think you got me there. <laughs> oh, nice. gosh damn it! Yeah. Oh, you're a good player, Frodan. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I drew that off the top of my deck, by the way. <laughs> oh, you, you don't have to say it. Oh my god. Yeah. Man, top decking your opponent. Yeah. Sometimes I think top decking is kind of hmm. What's that word called? Over exaggerated, I think. Over Does that make sense? Yeah, something like that. Like for example, oh my god, he top decked the BGH right. I mean, but then he could have had BGH in the hand anyways, right? But we never like right. It's, um, it's the flashy those. thing to focus on. It's like, oh, well, yeah, he didn't I guess. have it. Yeah. I and guess. he just happened to draw it. Yeah. Um, when he could have had it from the first place, you're absolutely right. People over, like it's because it's more dramatic to feel like, you know, it wasn't the there. Part of the cards. Did you ever oh, yeah, watch? It? It's like I need that card precisely off the top of my deck. You know, friend, the power of friendship. Yeah. You know, power willpower. Wow, we have to weave yeah. it there, right? Mm -hmm. that's, but I don't know. I feel like I every time I every day I stream, I feel like I top deck at least like five times. I don't know. It just it just happens a lot. Like it just how the game is kind of like, you know, it, I think it's normal. I don't think it's like lucky or anything. It's just, if it's in your deck. <laughs> okay. I don't know, I feel like, you know, okay. when, you, when you have a BG in your deck, okay. you're going to draw it sometime. So like draw it when they play a giant. Like why draw it like earlier? I don't know. I, I, I feel like um, you wouldn't necessarily pass the LSATs with that logic, but I, okay. I can follow you. I can follow you on that. No, it's the uh, you, intuition. You had me up until I don't think it's lucky. It's like no, okay. it's, it's the intuition, what? right? Like, <laughs> hmm. Okay, well, here's here's the thing that I can follow up and help support you. Okay. Um, one thing that is for sure is that everyone puts. Everyone also says, "Look, it's kind of unlucky he drew this." And it's like, well, he put that in the deck for a reason. And okay, like, okay, sure. Some people overemphasize like how some people might get unlucky with how the draws end up panning out, but. It's like, oh, he's playing unlucky as a ramp druid, but it's like, oh, but he put like 15 taunts that are six mana or higher. It's like, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The converse poorly, is you know? true. Yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, think uh, people overemphasize that. Yeah, yeah. Especially with the earlier um, games of Hearthstone, um, casters are all, always going, like, oh, he got a curve again. He got perfect curve. Of course he got perfect curve. He's playing Zoo. Like, they run eight one drops back then, right? Of course That's he's going to get it. That's what to do the curve. Exactly. Well. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I think people just need to wrap their head around. He did like, exactly if what he wanted. <laughs> no. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we have armor, up, armor up here. Um, mm. Oh, but I like Show's game. hand. I like Show's hand a lot. He's got inner rage on the Grim Patron with the Death Spite, and um, it's not necessarily about the card draw in the mirror match at all. Um, it's a right. lot about who can grab the early board and control it and never let go. Yeah. It feels like it's really hard to come back from a board full of patrons because that deck doesn't run any board clears. The only board clear is patron, and unfortunately, patrons do not clear patrons. Yes. Moreover, that um, some cards are just really funny because they're so good in your matchups for other decks, and then they're just liabilities elsewhere. 
Um, like Armorsmith, for example. It's one of the key cards to stay alive versus aggro. But in this matchup, it's just, uh, you don't want to see Armorsmith for a really long time. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think Armorsmith is the best example. It's just such a good card. I think a better example would be... Yeah? Like you like Armorsmith all the time? Yeah, I, 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 oh man. If Priest had Armorsmith, I would play Priest immediately. Priest really needs one of those cards that does that thing. Because, like, remember when you and Rekful talked about Armorsmith and AoEs? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Like if okay, you AOE so and more of it still does something. It has a death rattle, basically. Okay. That, yeah, yeah. And no two drops have death rattles that are like a one four. Okay. All right. When you see it like that, Amaz, you know, I again not necessarily passing the LSATs, but <laughs> I, I can definitely follow your line of uh your line of play yeah. there. All right. I got you. Thanks, Frodan. You're like supporting me, but then stabbing me is like not really, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this grim patron is going to uh, clone itself four times over. Um, you know, maybe we should fork that over to scientists trying to figure out the same. As uh, we'll have four of them, and you only can deal with two. It seems like two. Well, realistically, only oh, that's a good card. <laughs> but realistically, you only need to deal with uh, three, right? Because the five one is kind of like whatever; it's gonna die anyways. Well, the five one was challenging the the Thorson, so that was important for sure. Oh yeah, that's yeah. But yeah, you don't want them to <laughs> propagate, basically. Oh, it's just gonna stop right there. No more patrons, at least, in this hand right now. Yeah, it's okay. He's got a second patron, and now he can play his own Thorson, control the board, and would you would you attack the face with the the other patron at all? Like, is Whoa! The, th the three damage would also allow him to get battle rage value, and I know it might be like, well, you don't want to miss damage. Oh, okay, but... okay. You mean you mean? Uh, but are you trading the emperor? I think I'm just trading the emperor, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, not at all. Show once blood. Now that's a creative play. Hmm, <laughs> I'm very curious by that. I don't think chat agrees that it's a creative play to smork your opponent's face. I don't want to ignore a minion that usually has super taunt. Like, S that super Thorzen, taunt. Thorzen doesn't just have, like, implied taunt. It's got super taunt on it, usually. <laughs> uh, like, man, like, highest priority elimination. For some reason, when certain okay. cards hit the board of Maz, mm -hmm. there's this weird psychological impact that happens beyond the game. For example, Northshire Clerics, Manatide Totems, right? Okay, uh, I, I, I get it, I get it. I just like it, how you use the term implied, uh, what is that called, super taunt or something? Yeah, that was, it's that like, was... I have to kill this with every fiber of my being. Like, I will go through hell and back in order to make sure that this Snorshire Cleric dies. Like, but, there's some weird reactions that people have to that card. Yeah, yeah but is this justifiable? Because here, Shogun got punished for not clearing it. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm saying, traditionally, this is what happens, but... In this case, show ignored the super taunt and went face. Oh man, you don't want to ignore be paying it. the ultimate price. Don't ignore the super taunts. This is the lesson we learned today. Oh, that's that's pretty good. That's well, a got, good he, already, he already had a, a war song though that was reduced. Oh, actually, oh damn. Oh yeah. I just yeah. See. Oh, so excited. Okay, never mind. Oh. But now he can squeeze in an armor smith. It seems like he wants to hold on to it just so that. Uh, the reverse patron would not be that deadly, maybe? But yeah, once again here, the armor swift is a liability, like you said. Yes. And show well, I guess maybe he was feeling really confident for this very reason. If you think about it, there's only a few cards anyways in Taylor's hands. So the second the second patron um, effect wasn't nearly as impactful as the, the first one. Okay. Yeah. Maybe he would have went face again with the um, with the game pressure, but he thought otherwise and just cleared yeah. it off. I've learned my lesson. <laughs> All right. Well, um, Tiller is forced to use the um, Gromash here just because there's really not much else to do. And Whoa, is this really going to go face? face? Oh, just, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. oh, okay, okay, okay. We got faked out. We got faked out by spectator client. This happens pretty often. Oh, um, leaves the Warsong Commander. Well, I guess both patrons are out already, so yeah. there's not really that much scary stuff. The Frothing Berserker, though, is definitely still scary stuff. Oh, man, the Great. top deck, execute. Okay, I guess top decks are pretty exciting. I, I, I take it back. Yeah, it is pretty flashy. It's like, oh, we needed precisely that card. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I think realistically, he still could have killed that Gromash. It just would have costed four cards. Yeah, let's not do that. Let's not trade four cards into one card. Yeah. Slam is a decent start, I guess. Yeah, this so is a good. this might be another big moment too. Show us Harrison Jones. Oh wait, yeah, never mind. Sure, He's yeah. got a second death bite. But yeah. the Harrison Jones is still really impactful in the drawing a card. Every draw is just another way you can get closer to potentially having your win condition again. Because yep. I think now that show is out of his grim patrons, he's going to have to rely on frothing berserkers. And his opponent's at, you know, 17 health. It's not exactly the most. Yeah. Well, it's still a respectable amount of health, right? Usually after two patron uh, cycles, your opponent's down at like five or six and you just finish with Gromash or something. True story. True story. But this, again, this is looking like... Um, it's looking like a show will be keeping his opponent on a defensive foot if he draws another minion. Because he's now at 12 health. Ugh. Uh, that Harrison really put a dent into Tiddler's plans here. And show's looking a little too close to game. Possibly with a. No, no frothing. Slam, oh. though, is all right. It's we'll more than all right. It. It's pretty good. Ooh. Oh, more draw, of course. That's exactly what we wanted. Rage Reno. And there you go. Frothing Berserkers. Now that... Hmm. How about this? Would you consider keeping that Frothing Berserker on the board so that way you can get a bigger Frothing on your side to kill? Uh, oh, you laugh, but I'm saying that it could be an extra <laughs> two to three damage. Uh, Plus you can yeah, hit face this turn. Plus you can hit face this turn. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess we know what you like to play a lot. Yeah, warrior, I like. I've played. Time? Okay, Amaz, I've played a lot of Patient Warrior in my time too. Okay. okay. Where like, um, I've been in situations where like I'm short one or two damage, and it's because I didn't leave a minion on board. Sometimes. Okay. You're Actually, at, you're at 32 know. health. You're at 32 health. He yeah, can't okay, kill you. Yeah, okay. I agree with your play too, but I okay. mean, Frothing is obviously oh, one of those minions where you have to clear, right? It's the Northshire cleric. That's true. Over there, it's, so. true. it's true. I don't really fault um, show for okay. clearing. Well, hey, look, he also got an armor smith, so he would have gained a lot of life. Um, yeah, that probably true. was not the right play in retrospect. Well, is there a, uh, is there a battle rage, possibly? Uh, no. Oh, man. No, 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 no. Such a... Just an execute. Wow, with double, with double okay. ghoul? Is this lethal? Um, the problem is he can't pop those ghouls. Uh, just Two just frothing berserkers, that's it. eight. Oh, that's, that, is that good? Uh, Six... Four. Six, 12, 12 plus 5. Well, 12 plus 5. Yeah, 12 Where plus 5. Where do you get the 5 from? Oh, no, no, you can't win well because you're missing a mana. Oh, never mind. I have 11 mana in my... Oh, no, 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 you have Armorsmith. You have Armorsmith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That can so also you get play... you another 2 damage. Yeah, you play Warsong, Frog. But he also Frog gains life. He gains life oh, from yeah, he Armorsmith. Gains life. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, is, uh, I don't know. Maybe there's a lethal here that we can't find fast enough. Uh, 2, you, 4... And then whirlwinds, um, what now? five times ten, fourteen. Oh, five, yeah, five plus ten, right? So yeah, fourteen, sixteen. Five oh, if he executes armor smith, does no, that no, change no. it? You're removing one minion from the board, so it's not quite it. Right. Okay, so you you reduce it by four damage by doing that. Ah, all right. Well, it doesn't look like he has it. I'm waiting for the post that might show us the way, though. So feel free to, to laugh at us. Uh, I don't think there is. Come on, we have to be confident, Frodan. All right, you changed your mm, hair color to be right. confident, right? Uh, no, I changed my hair color to impress a girl, but it didn't really work. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to know that, though. But now we all do. Ah, uh, and now they can't undo it. Mm -hmm. This is also really dangerous because now that he's um put two more patrons on the field. There's like a lot of potential for the frothings to do crazy. Oh wow! Damage. Yeah, it's a reverse. Uh... No, he's gonna copy this patron. Oh no! He, of course you want to copy the patron. G G. Oh yeah, but I mean, like no, in the sense wanna... that. Well, you want to cool taskmaster the ghoul to copy more patrons, right? You can execute the ghoul to copy the patrons. He doesn't have to toss out. Oh, the... now this is a good copy. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's gonna get killed. No. Oh man. Oh man. It's so bad. So what normally should look like a board swing, because by all means, this is actually a great play, assuming your opponent doesn't have exactly those four <laughs> out of five cards. A frothing, two frothings with Horsong and a whirlwind. So you get punished for playing. Oh, oh no! Oh no! This is so bad. 
Don't He's not even counting. He's not even counting. He knows. He knows. Oh, he's no. There's no way. That's. Oh, that is a million uh, damage. This is a million damage. That's 12 damage per whirlwind. Oh. Tiddler is super bummed. Oh. Wait, no, no, no. It's more damage because you kill off. <laughs> you yeah, kill exactly. Off these things. Yeah. Right. Oh, cool. this is just sad. All right, we can um. I'll oh, take a cup of tea, yeah. and then when we come back, the animation should be about done. That's right. I'm gonna take a quick water step. Mm -hmm. That was just one whirlwind animation. Oh my god. So uh, I think if we can go ahead and just think about uh, the key moments of this game, it has to be that Show is able to draw and control the board um, a little bit better, yep. and ultimately he had those small little things that helped give him gas, so the Harrison. And Harrison allowed him to draw that second whirlwind and all that other stuff. So, really well done. Oh man, one frothing was not enough to kill. They had to be two. Yeah, it was two yeah. frothings. Two frothings. Yeah. Well, wait, remember that cast where players, where the two casters did the water pass? Wait, you have your water here, right? Okay, let's do a cheers. I do. I do. Okay. Ready? Cheers. cheers for we'll, we'll, we'll pour one for the. Oh the shoot! Water. Wrong direction. Okay. What? What are you doing? No, wait, the cheers. Not, didn't you say? Oh, okay. No, no, cheers. just, just, just cheers. Okay, I'm in the right direction. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, cheers. Okay, there you go. See, that was really good. Good queer. Oh, now we drink. All right. Mm -hmm. Now I spilled it all over myself. Well, um, you know, rest in peace, Siddler, because <laughs> you're benched. Oh and man, now frozen Siddler ice has to come out. Officially benched, so it's gonna be frozen ice versus Savish, and Savish is gonna use a zoo lock. And looking at this. Um, Rogue is okay against Zoo, and Hunter's okay against Zoo, so it's not that bad that Tiller's benched. But sooner or later, Tiller needs to win a game versus Savage's uh, yeah, Zoo. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, eventually. Uh, yeah, the big question mark is the Druid. Can the Druid win against the Warlock? Mm -hmm. The other oh, class the is, is, they certainly can win against Warlock, though. But the thing is, like, Zoo can always do Zoo stuff, right? They can always just get a win um, out of nowhere. So not only does uh, Celestial need to beat it three times normally, they need to beat it one extra time with the bad matchup. And that's just going to be very difficult. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I agree. And uh, I'm looking forward to see if Tither, Celestial, and Crew can go ahead and swing this the opposite way. It's going to be really cool to see a team finally make one epic comeback eventually. It's going to happen one day, Amaz, where one player is up 5-0 on behalf of his team and then loses six sh straight. That okay, would be you think, sick. Okay, you think that's going to go come first, or do you think someone's going to go 0-6 first, where the whole team just loses? Oh, well, 0-6 first, uh, just because that's statistically more likely. But oh, well, I, think, I, think both would be, I think both would be really fun to see. Mm -hmm. Because... And you get to see like one team get the memes made out of, right? I was really thinking that we were going to call them Tempo Six Storm. Um, <laughs> but then they started winning games and I was like, oh, oh yeah, no, that's, that's less fun. Yeah. yeah. And then you become like this weird, fun, you know, community thing where they can be like, ah, these guys never win. You lost to the team that, you know, you gave them their first win because they're, they're like 0-6 in the league and then you, you give them their first oh. win type thing. Yeah. So. Well, Storylines is definitely what a team league can make, I guess. Um, but yeah, you know, absolutely. Uh, I, I think uh, every team did a pretty good showing in the first week. You know, nobody went particularly bad or particularly good, right? Everybody went okay. So um, yeah, these teams are actually practicing, I, I believe, and uh, actually trying to feel out the format a bit. Maybe in the first week they just went okay. Let's just bring six decks and like, see whatever happens, right? But I think the uh, the teamwork dynamic is going to start coming in in the later weeks. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Makes sense. Um, so <clears throat> I'm, I'm predicting a Rogue coming out here from, um, from Frozen Ice. I think Rogue is not only the class that Frozen Ice is most familiar with. He famously hit number one in Asia multiple seasons in a row with Miracle Rogue. I think it was like, like three seasons in a row he like hit number one. And I think he finished number one one of those seasons. Um, so I think it's his most comfortable class, and I think it's also the best chance against the zoo. Generally speaking, um, right. I know a lot of people really like Hunter versus Zoo, but I feel like uh, Rogue has a better chance here. I am. Yeah, and of course tiebreakers do count, right? And the tiebreakers are determined on how many games you win overall throughout the round robin. So why not just you know 
make the best out of it and win some games. And of course, it also builds up some momentum and some, uh, you know, spirit for the team to go like, ah, we're not over this. This is not over yet. You know, we still have a chance. Mm. Okay. Um, and you do want to get the, yeah, like you said, win as many games as possible. The tiebreakers is very real. How do how does the tiebreakers even work if um, you're saying like if they're tied for seventh and eighth place, right? Or fourth and third, what? fifth and sixth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, the, can the, the, uh, we can bring up the bracket thing again uh, with the standings page. Uh, and then we can see that. Uh, going first and third is actually quite beneficial. Ob obviously, you want second, right? Uh, you're going to want to go like two for third because first two teams go to that finale immediately. Uh, and of course, the third place uh, winner will get to pick the bracket. So who they want to face against for phase two, which will create some interesting oh. uh, storyline as well, right? So oh. for example, um, you're third and then you go like, yeah, I want to choose what I think is the worst team to face against. Uh, that can create some hype as well. See, everyone's going to say they chose the team they think they match up the best against, but they really mean the worst. So, yeah, that's you're right, Amaz. <laughs> I actually didn't realize how relevant tiebreakers are. There's three breaking points between second, third, five, six, and seven, eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are quite a few. I mean, there's a lot because yeah. there's, four, there's four divisions, effectively. There's the scrubs in number eight, <laughs> there's the. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. There's the people who tried but failed. And then oh. there's the people who like did not so well, but they can redeem themselves and yeah. six and seven. Okay. And then you have like the people who can still play reasonably well and unfortunately things didn't go their way. And then you have the uh, the people who are, quote, always lucky in first and second. But oh. I, I think this is really starting to shape up pretty well. I really like the team dynamic here. Um, and I, th I think what's cool is that uh, there is little flexibility with how things pan out. Because um, I know people are always wondering, like, well, if it's eight weeks and some of the teams are traveling for big events, you know, will they always be able to play? And these teams are really making it priority to make sure that this team league happens. Oh, yeah. I do hope that, uh, you know, a quarter million dollars is incentive enough for, you know, people to make it their is games. Amaz. And then you I know? go ahead and watch some of the other streams, like the <laughs> cash game yesterday, and someone lost, like, a quarter million in, like, five minutes. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And That's all they do is just sigh. And I'm like, what? That's all you do? It's like, that's our entire year's prize pool at our world championships. And you just threw it away in five minutes. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, Anyways, at that level, yeah. it's basically Monopoly money, right? So Yeah, it's not real. It's, it's, it's the perspective. It, it, I mean, not perspective, but what's that word called? The reference. The, what's that word? Um, reference? Context? Con yes, context. Is that that very smart, Frodan. Oh, oh, man. Thank you. Good job. I guess the first word... That came to my head. Yeah, that's good. I'm that glad was you're right. very impressed. Very nice. All right, so uh, Zoo versus Hunter. Here we go. Frozen okay. Nice is using the um, you know, the hybrid-ish Hunter that we've seen before. That's right. That didn't oh, really hybrid advance. Hunter. Hybrid Hunter struggles against Zoo, doesn't it? Because it's um, like it doesn't have the ability to seize the board back as easily, and it doesn't. Uh, or, I don't yeah, know. I, Actually, I'm not sure. I, I guess. Wait, is Face Hunter good against Zoo, in your opinion? Uh, I think so, because I think it can outpace it and do too much damage for Zoo to. Right. Like, sure. for their board control to matter. Because okay. Zoo will eventually wrestle away board control from Face Hunter, but it won't do it in time for it to matter, usually. Okay. So, based on, based on what you said there, I think that uh, Face Hunter. Uh, I, think admit, uh, I mean, Hybrid Hunter has an edge over Zoo, but here, okay. it's actually going to be a little bit of problematic because the Freezing Trap is going to be up. Well, thankfully, it doesn't unleash the Hounds to clear off this board really nicely. Yeah, and you can leave the uh, Flame Imp. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, do you really bounce back a Flame Imp? Mm, no, you just taunt it up, I guess, over the next couple turns. Yeah, I mean, if you do bounce with the flame map, you're giving your opponent one and a half free hero powers. That seems pretty Yeah, it's a really interesting way to think about it, assuming you're playing it ever again. Um, you might just toss it away if you have Doom Guard, but in this scenario, I'm 100% I'm behind you. Mm. In this case, flame map just sats as a mini taunt. Now, right? one thing that you could do is try to bounce back some of these other useful cards, like Defender of Argus. That's a good plan, but uh, doesn't look like it's uh, that good for Savish right now because Frozen Ice is going to develop another min. Oh, oh my god, and it's a final high main. It's right. going to drop down soon. All right, so yeah, what exactly do you play here? Uh, 
Well, the, knowing that the freezing trap's up there and you can't really stop it from not mm. sucking, right? <laughs> well, you, I mean, yeah, there's really nothing you can do. I think you just play the biggest minion available to you. And that's low sub. Yeah. If you play the Wolf Rider, you could be able to clear off the, um, the haunted spiders, the special spiders that come out. Yeah. And then uh, the Argus is still going to get freezing. Uh, well, well, Argus being six mana is still really clunky. Mm, so yeah. it's not exactly like the worst thing. It's just that that's really good if Zoo needs to... Like if they lock down a solid board with Void Callers and you don't have a way to get past it and then... You know, also there's stuff happens where Malganis or Doomguards come out. Argus is really powerful though. But I think this is still okay for the hunter. Yeah, okay. Well, Voidwalker is definitely not a good card here. It is a freezing. There you go. Is it, and I'm is it better to attack a minion there than the face if you even if you know that it's freezing trap? Uh is it higher is it more likable? It's snake trap. What if explosive trap? If it was explosive trap, then uh, you feel feel he's pretty silly too, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, no, you pre you feel pretty silly either ways. So <laughs> just pick one, right? right. I mean, pick explosive your poison. Trap, you want to nu <laughs> nuke your boy for two? No, well, that's pretty bad. Oh man, the void terror would have been so good with the power warming, but uh, no, can do. Yeah, too expensive for at least at the moment. So do you just eat the spiders here? Yeah, I think he was contemplating if he can also toss in the owl. Like if you just make it a 3-2 and you kill off the 2-1, so that way you force an awkward trade. But that weapon does complicate stuff. It makes it kind of irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Well, Leoc here would be actually the best, right? What's wrong with high main though? If you just drop high main and just get past the void walker normally. You oh, have a 5-5 five, five and a 6-5. Oh, I don't know. I feel like you have so much damage off of playing Animal Companion and Wolf Rider. Because load them into a void, walk void Walker is not really what you want to see. I do want to clear off the 1-1 one -one here though. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah. I, th I think your board is really intimidating at this point. So yeah, oh. I, re I retract everything I say. This is a but. very good play, right? I mean, you can uh, power overwhelming the egg and then make a very big Void Terror along with a 4-4 four -four, and then Argus them up next turn. Yeah. Set up for Dr. Boom, you force your opponent to trade a little bit down, and then um, let Dr. Boom bring you back. Oh, or, wow. shall so I say, greedy. explode you back into the game. Oh, oh never mind. so greedy, though. Hmm. Tapping, Jesus. What does he want to find? Implosion for four? Oh, that uh, was so greedy. Oh. Let's see. Well, he's going to silence the Jaime here. And. What he wants to do is he wants to get the Nerubian Egg out first, so that way he can get this, the Power Overwhelming Synergy. But how much damage can he be taking this turn? So 11 from this, so he's 8. So Wolf Rider plus Leoc and Hero Power, uh, you can't Hero Power. Uh, so Leoc is not quite lethal, but he's put down to 1. Oh, no, that's... that's Huffer is good, right? 1 damage off lethal. So okay. you don't have to Wolf Rider, you can, okay. Well, no, 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 you can no, Wolf Rider, you. you can also uh, Haunted, oh wait, he has Argus, right? Yeah. No, 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 you want to you wanna put your opponent down to one or two in the Hunter's Yeah, case. so you can do the same thing with Hero Power and play Haunted Creeper. Right, and you and cannot implosion yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you can't implosion yourself, did you know that? Uh, yeah, I found out the hard way whenever I, you know. Well, uh, no, I tried imposing myself one time, and I was like, oh, oh, the game prevents me from being bad. Okay. You know there was a bug when, um, when GVG was first released, and you can Shadow Flame yourself? Oh, that's right! You can Shadow Flame your own hero board to it for zero yeah. damage and die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a little bug yeah, thing. Yeah, that was really, really funny. It. You yeah, can actually was... Shadow Flame yourself, too, if you're Jaraxxus, and do three damage on the board. Wow. Yeah, because it takes the attack of whatever it is. Well, that's AoE, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's, um, we'll call it a last resort. Know, resort. But uh, it was possible. And I think the only way that it could have worked out okay is if you need to get past a taunt to kill his boom bots, to kill your boom bots, to, to kill him and tie. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, that's very next level. Yes, that was actually the, the only scenario. I remember someone telling me that. 
So you I think are it was the Crip. best Hearthstone player, it's, but you no, just, I think I think Crip just knows too many weird, awkward. Oh, Crip scenarios. said it. Oh man, I think he was telling me that, but mm -hmm. it could have been someone else. Okay. Someone was like telling me like how that would be applicable. Well, here uh, we did see that the hunter did beat the uh, Savage Zoo. So uh, we're going to move on to the next match. Once again, Team Liquid is on match point. So as soon as the Vich wins, then uh, they can all go out and celebrate uh, for the first week victory and join the winners of Nihilum. Um, who else won? Uh, Force and Boys. And who's the other guy? Who's the other team that won this week? Oh, uh, so sorry. You, you cut out. Um, oh, you're asking about yeah. one so far? So okay, we no, had yeah, uh, well, Force so and Boys win today, and then yesterday mm -hmm. we had um, Team Archon go up against Nihilum, which Nihilum was able to Nihilum. take out. Nihilum and then Cloud is... Nine, yeah, yeah, and then uh, Cloud Nine uh, got a really oh, you know bad set, yeah, against Value Town, where Kibler yeah. was able to win those games, and they were able to take that series. So. Yeah. And so far, if I pull this trusty sheet over me, the only people who got two O. Are Firebat, Life Coach, Kibler, Ekop, Forsen, and Silent Storm, and Irea as well. So these are the only and guys Chucky. who went 2 0. Chucky? Oh, Chucky. Yeah. No, Just remember. Oh, 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 yeah, Chucky's Chucky, yeah. Chucky 2 0 as well. Yeah. And you also said only with like the tone as like we don't oh, have many. And you're like, that. only, you know, a third of the league <laughs> ended up going 2 0. And it's like, wow, well, that actually ended up being a lot more. Um, Okay, well, there is one only statistic, mm -hmm. and that's Kalento, who that's never right. played a single game. Okay, see, now that's, that's the context where you could say only, right? Yeah, but... It's like, he only, he's the only player that hasn't won a game. But, but it's bad news. You know, usually, you don't want to focus on the bad news. Well, I think it's an interesting storyline, Particular mm -hmm. if you juxtapose it with how Kalento normally is a dominant player over a large variance or sorry a large sample size, because you're supposed to take like how more games means uh, more chances for the better players to win. So Kalento oh. comes in with like a big reputation potentially being the best player of the batch, at least if you ask uh, you know the majority of the people watching and playing, mm -hmm. and yet he's the only one without a win. Um, Speaking now there are of which. Uh, I had to mention this really quickly. The person who actually does the best in the round robin phase, um, and actually makes it to the grand finale as well, so the best win percentage, uh, gets a five thousand dollar extra bounty. So cool. That's you should call it the you should just call it MVP award. Whoever would get no, no, we it. call it the master of duels, the MOD. Uh, and they also get it. And they also Maz. get in my channel. You know, you had That's, so much potential what? to call it a lot what? of things. No, no, no. We call it master of duels. Yeah, that's, that that's sounds a like really a bad good app in the iTunes store. Oh my! It probably God. is. Hey, hey, iTunes store is pretty amazing. Okay. It is for monetization values on cheap app games like Master of Duels. What? A, no one wants that. You should have called them the most valuable MVT, most valuable top decker. Oh. That would have been sick. Uh, okay, okay, let's get to the game here. Uh, Savish is once again carrying up his Zulok. That's the only deck left to win. And Tiddler is going to step up to play with his warrior deck. It's and we do know his patron. Warrior. Yeah, we do know his patron. So it's actually a good matchup. Yes. Uh, uh, generally speaking. Now, we have seen awkward draws in patron in the past. In fact, I, I kind of hope that you guys do some kind of statistical <laughs> breakdown. I don't know if you guys will be doing it or other people who are big fans, you know, disguised okay, sure. loves doing it, um, loves breaking down stuff. But I'd really like to see the win percentage of some of these decks because I feel like Grim Patron Warrior has has just been just subpar, um, to say the least. Okay. And I, I can't say why exactly. I feel like maybe there's too many unfortunate sequence of draws. Maybe the, the variance in terms of how they're preparing their decks like for example, Tiddler puts shield block, and uh, other people don't. Mm -hmm. So, I'm 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 wondering. I'm curious, man. Why do you think Grim Patron hasn't been succeeding as much? Uh, to, to be honest, what I think is that they've been killing themselves a lot. Um, they have. You mean the blowback is too high? Whoa! Wait a minute. Wait! 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 Whoa! whoa. Did Tiddler just not attack the face there with the armor suit? Oh, you're right. I was looking at the match oh. history bar, but um, you know the yeah. armor smith is a very pacifist. Card. <laughs> it loves it loves ev it wants everyone to get along. 
Okay. Well, obviously that was a mistake. Let's just say that first. But uh, I actually think that playing Hearthstone around might... Jones. I think Hearthstone needs more Ancient Watcher-esque type of cards, you know? Um, things that can't, can't attack. attack. Yeah. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Okay. I, well, I would actually really like um, like a... You know how there's defender type cards or wall type cards in other CCGs or TCGs? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like taunt that, and kind of like, Yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. Wall or defender type cards. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. And control decks would really love that. It's just, I would have been really dominant so far in the meta, so I wouldn't be too unhappy if they yeah. introduced those cards. It could be like a one, two taunt, every damage it takes is one damage type of thing. Like those kinds of things are really interesting and dynamic because then Priest has like legitimate ways to. Make it oh really man, good. if Priest buffs up those minions, that'll be pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, those those kinds of cards exist. I'm not like reinventing the wheel. These are cards that exist in other games. Okay. But um nonetheless, uh Tilo doesn't need any of that. He's got a bunch of ways to dissect this aggressive board seizing through his own means. Okay. And yeah. the challenge is that um Zoo needs to establish a board to pressure the warrior before it can start answering its threats uh through mass combos. But okay. it's not really doing that. Bane of Doom. Is it? Should it be Bane of Doom? Not Lothab? Yeah, Bane of Doom! Obviously, it should be Bane of Doom. Actually, I like Lothab after a death fight, so we can't probably get more patrons with, like, you know, stuff like Inner Rage and stuff like that. But, mm -hmm. man, Bane of Doom is so juicy here. Like, what if you get Malganus? If you get Malganus, do you just, like, win? Because he can't answer it with, um... There's no Execute. Yeah, actually, I think Doom Guard sometimes is better than Malganus. Oh, Sea Giant. Oh, it's... Sea Giant. Oh, that's actually way smarter. Actually. That's really smart. We 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 forgot about the Haunted Creepers uh, being able to split into two. Yeah. Band Doom is still pretty enticing, but no, I think it's really hard I think to play Sea Giant. Giant. I think Sea yes. Giant is the way the better play, because like patrons usually kill all your stuff after the AOE, and if you play a Sea Giant into patrons. I don't think they really care about it. So yeah, I like this play a lot. Yeah, I mean, if you think about other ways that um, this class can, or this deck can struggle with, if you think about how it compares to Handlock and how it deals with bigger threats, the Sea Giant being put out is almost the same exact timing. It's like a turn 5, 8-8. Eight, eight. You know, how else do you deal with it other than Execute? And even if you have Execute, you have the ways to deal with it immediately. Like, you have to have uh, a minion on board plus a way to activate it. Yeah, it's, uh, if you put it that way, it's kind of like, uh, what's this face called? The Fell Reaver, right? Pretty much. Oh, yeah, sure. Fell Reaver with no drawback. No drawback at all. Yeah. That's, That's why Fell Reaver needs a buff. You don't, you <laughs> want to hear something really funny, Amaz? I think, you, you know, you would shake your head when you hear this. Okay. But I remember, uh, Fel, like, Reyna was telling me how much he didn't like Fell Reaver, even though he really wanted to. Oh, that's terrible, man. That's too. pretty bad. Uh, um... He was telling me that even if Fell Reaver was a 30-30, he wouldn't play. Wow. And it's, and then this was this was like a couple months ago, you know. And then okay. he's like, even if it was a 50-50, he wouldn't play it. And I was like, really? And he's like, okay, maybe if it was a 29-29, I wouldn't play it. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fell Reaver needs a buff, TLDR. Mm -hmm. He said sarcastically before people start taking him seriously. Yeah. Now, but, yeah. Um, the thing is, this <laughs> this uh, sea giant can get followed up with more threats. Wow! Looks like Savage is in a pretty dominating position here, yeah. and it's just because Tiller didn't really draw the death bite no in time. Really. Yeah. No death bite. Um, no executes. Yeah, and I think that's it. And Tiller's gonna pretty much oh. drop this game. Yeah. There's no way for him to survive this much damage. No way. He won't even survive the next swing on board. There's 13, and he would be at 13 max health. Well, it seems like uh, Kalento's going to gain a buddy here as Tiddler also goes 0 4. <gasps> oh we... my goodness. Oh. I, think there's a co I think there's a weird coincidence of Maz. If you win a Dreamhack, one of the hardest tournaments in the world for Hearthstone, oh, you end up going 0 4. 0 4. Mm mm mm. This and... is pretty bad. Yeah, if you kind of go with that kind of record, I don't yeah. think your teammates can really, you know, carry you that much. But eh, maybe it's just uh, just this week. Hopefully, the uh, team selection will come back for more. But for this week, the uh, first one, Team Liquid, is going to get the victory.
it's highly unrepresentative of how Tiddler even, you know, like, again, Tiddler and Calento, these are two really amazing players. Um, yeah. And they end up being not necessarily the liabilities, just, just that they ended up having to lose. Uh, you have to kind of see it as a <laughs> team, as a cohesive unit, because they're bringing a lineup. Conquest is about lineups. It's not about individual decks. Okay. And so if you think about it that way, the teams have to play kind of as one entity, so to speak. It just happens Makes that sense. it breaks down to the who's controlling or who's piloting the decks. Um, yeah. So you can point at Tiddler, you can point at Kalanto, but ultimately it's... Uh, team effort. It's a team effort. So okay. Team Celestial is the one that loses here, not Tiddler. For the, for everybody. I just right. want to go ahead and throw it out there. Okay, okay for I that. I have That's a question good. though, Amaz. If we're going to go ahead and give uh, 5000 bucks to the MVT... Doesn't it favor certain people from playing like the best decks, and that way they like they you encourage a little uh, discourse between the players? Like I'm going to play the best deck so I can get the best record. It's like you can't play; you have to play Paladin. You don't get it. Yeah. Well, it's just a little bonus uh, thing, uh, and I guess winning is important, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Don't need to go. Th you don't need to focus on 5k bounty when you have the quarter million dollars. Are you really going to call that prize MVT now? It's the master yes. of duels. Okay. <laughs> God damn it. Do we have a standings chart for the viewers right now? I hope uh, we do. We have it updated. Right. So we can actually um, recap on the um, whole week. Well, this is the recap for this series. Uh, the, the Team Liquid does beat Celestial without Tiller winning a single game. Unfortunate for them. But we will see them next week. And of course, we'll see Liquid next week along with all the teams for a new decks and uh, new games as well. Um, if we kind of wait for this frame to pass. Yeah. Um, we, <laughs> guys, this is the end of the week. We have two days a week, I believe, for the Archon yes, League. Um, we correct. have four teams to play, or eight teams, four teams to play per day. And so the next week we'll be having um, on Thursday, July 8th. Well, we'll yes. mix it up once again with who plays whom. The standings haven't updated, but just to go ahead and show you, you can go ahead and vision it. We have Value Town, Nylum, Force and Boys, and Team Liquid taking their first series. But most importantly, for the second place teams, which is, you know, four of them tied for second. I guess they're tied for fifth, though, if they want to keep uh, technical. Uh, well, the game wins should be kind of, you know, sorted out the placements. Yeah. But we'll fix yeah, that. I guess so. uh, don't worry about that. But the game yeah, wins do matter, though. Celestial only ended up winning oh, how many? Three. three? Yeah. So yeah. they're tied with Cloud9 for last place. Well, we do have the next week's uh, uh, matchups in. Uh, it's actually all in the schedule if you um, look into our website, uh, which is uh, teamarkoncom slash uh, league. We're actually going to improve the uh, page with more graphics soon. But week two, which is uh, once again July 8th, it's going to be Value Town versus Force and Boys. That's going to be amazing. The two um, teams with all the players. And we're going to also get Archon versus Temple Storm. Now, that will be also a Pretty oh boy. No oh boy. Man. Are you gonna cast that with me, Amos? Oh, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, no. No, well, I'm not even, I might not even be casting that one. You yeah, have to yeah, but, okay. I'm I think I would play up I think I would cast... play up and manufacture too much drama. Maybe, but it'll be fun, right? <laughs> uh but the point is like I'm not supposed to be casting this. Uh, I'm supposed to be like on the um behind the scenes and actually trying to work all the assets and calling out the people to do this and do that and um uh, it went pretty well, actually, with me casting as well. I'm kind of the backup. But uh, shout out to all the production guys and everybody behind the scenes. You're doing fantastic. Shout out to the casters as well. Froden, you're amazing as always. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, appreciate it. Thanks for stopping in and uh, being able to sub in. You know, we, we sat the full, but you know, we'll, we'll go ahead and <laughs> help the candidates go away. Yeah. All right. So I guess we can wrap this up. That's right. Thank you so much for everybody watching. Make sure you hit the follow button on the channel. We'll see you guys next week on Thursday, July 8th at 10 a.m. Pacific. Same channel. We'll see you guys then. Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. We'll see you guys Wednesday.